Check real time. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I I hear you coming through now. What's it? What's it cool. the stream? All right, cool. All right, sorry about I that, guys. Stop, I can stop here like two different two three different conversations. Uh, but right. what I was saying there for a second was the the three games coming to the Nintendo Switch online this month are amazing, uh, Hibariki. I'm sure I butchered that. Super R Type and Wrecking Crew '98. Three uh, SNES games that I have never heard of. Yeah, have you heard any of those before? I've heard of the the Wrecking Crew '98, but I haven't played any of these, which which I like. I, I like them throwing up games I've never played or. Yeah, I believe that first one might have been a Japanese only game. Yeah, uh, based off of off of some some of the stuff I'm seeing, but the other two looked like they had they came out uh, here in the West. Yeah, I, I I love that. I love when they bring over like the Famicom games and stuff, things that we never had the opportunity to play. So I'm pretty excited yeah. about it. I like I like the weird stuff getting added because like the other stuff we can play anytime, like you know yeah, things so the... that people had never heard of. Yeah, so uh, Super Type R is kind of more like the uh, side-scrolling uh, shooter type thing. I think Wrecking Crew '98 is more of like a uh, more like a puzzle game, if anything else. And then um, Super Hibiki. I was trying to figure out pull up the actual description, but this article is kind of crap. Yeah. Uh, um. It, it looks like some kind of like uh, like top-down fighter or party game, but I can't really. Uh, I mean, I've based off what the the article was showing me, they just have like one little snapshot, so it's really hard to tell what it is. Yeah, I, I was just watching the trailer back on it. It's like, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. It's very like weird like a party type, game type. Yeah, thing. it's almost like a it's like a party style game. Uh, I don't know how really to explain it. I mean, we uh, the R type series. I've played quite a few of them, but for some reason, never played this one. The Wrecking Crew '98 is kind of interesting because it's a Mario game that was kind of stuck in Japan, and yeah, it's a it's a puzzle type game. It's like a very unique one too. It's like it's really kind of weird, um, but but it's cool, you know. Games that are stuck in Japan getting brought over, I'm all for it. So it's um, pretty easy for them too. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, they were just never brought over for for whatever reason, probably because they weren't all that profitable in Japan and. They're like, eh, it's probably not going to make money. Why spend all this time, you know, porting it and stuff like that? I was uh, I was looking at this article the other day, and they were talking about... Um, <clears throat> they were talking about how they were always changing all the box arts for games here that, you know, the, oh, the yeah. Japanese box art to something, like, absurd here. You know, like... You always got, you know, something subpar. It was always something, like, it had to be, like, a Rambo-type character, and meanwhile, like... The Japanese cover for it totally actually looks more in line with the actual game. Yeah, there was a specific game. Oh gosh, I can't remember what it was. I think most I was... people lean more towards the infamous Mega Man cover, where it's just the 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 one we got here in the U.S. or in the West was just bad. Oh god, yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Uh, um, yeah, crazy bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like absurdly um like no there's stupid stuff so i'm like looking at one here like really dumb stuff where like okay kirby kirby's ret return to dreamland for the wii right like we get this one where they make kirby look mean and angry holding the sword meanwhile you look at the it's called you know kirby's adventure wii in europe meanwhile he's all happy go lucky on the cover like jumping up and all excited but we get the angry, mean-looking Kirby and characters on the the front cover, and just like you know, stupid stuff like that. Um, they've always got. I, I'm looking at like even the Xbox 360 era of stuff. Um, yeah, just, I don't understand that. I guess uh, we should probably kind of recap because I don't know what was lost there, but just some of the stuff that we're going over. Of course, episode uh, 80, so sorry for the technical difficulties, audio listeners. Uh, but we're going over, we talked a little bit about Star Wars Outlaws. Maybe we, we can recap that again. But, uh, of course, Fallout TV show. Uh, we just talked about the Nintendo Switch Online games. We got the BAFTA Awards, which is one of the bigger things of the week. Um, the X Xbox backwards compatibility stuff we just touched on. Um, I think we're both kind of like, oh, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't, I don't really believe it. So I see it type of thing, um, and then the Deadpool Wolverine stuff, you know, showing the trailer, all that jazz, and yeah, some of the stuff that we'll be going over. But 
Just wanted to recap that real quick. I guess we can go ahead and dive into uh, the BAFTA Awards, I suppose. Um, so that was one of the bigger things of the week. Um, I didn't even know it happened <laughs> until today. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where um, I guess for us, it's not like majorly important or big. Uh, but I mean that it was one of the biggest news topics this week, and I mean it's more of uh, more of some of the same games kind of pulling the same same stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of trying to pull up some uh, stuff here. Yeah, so I, I said some of the article kind of cut through all the all the fat and went straight towards the actual winners. So. Uh... I got the article pulled up from the BBC. I don't know what, what you had pulled up, but uh, some of the winners were. So apparently the debut game, uh, they gave the award to Venba, which I have no idea I what that is. What that is. Never heard of that before. Um, some of these, some of these are, are obviously starts from the lesser to the to the better ones. Uh, the audio achievement uh, went to Alan Wake 2. Okay. Uh, multiplayer, surprisingly, went to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Don't even have anything to say on that. Thing. I don't know if they've got any stipulations on it has to be a new game or, or ongoing game or something like that. Yeah, I really uh, don't know. Their award for evolving game went to Cyberpunk 2077, which I guess means, you know, DLC that dropped after the fact or continue and supported. Kind of what I took with that. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it was a decent DLC. I did a lot, a lot of content. Did, uh, not to interrupt you with the game ones, because I want you to continue yeah. that, but I just wanted to let you know, animated film, the boy and the heron won. That's, so that's cool to see. I'm no, down absolutely. with that. I, I haven't mean, got it's... to watch it yet, but I mean, I know it's going to be good. I don't have to. Probably the the best one I saw. I mean, as as a Ghibli film, yeah, it's a, it's a really really good film. Recommend anybody that gets a chance to actually see it. You know, go go watch it. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, gonna watch it. Uh, for game design, they gave it to Dave the Diver. I think that's a game you knew a lot yeah. about. Yeah. Good game. Uh, since this is a British game award, the British game went to Viewfinder. <laughs> what? Specifically British game is this is a segment. <laughs> uh which but feels like it feels like an indie award and it, you know, obviously went to an indie game. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. Yeah. Uh the artistic achievement award went to Alan Wake 2 again. Oh nice. Uh, new intellectual property went to Viewfinder. For narrative, I mean, obviously it's, it has to be BG three, Baldur's Gate three. I mean, no, no other game was going to touch that on on a on a narrative or yeah, probably in a, a game of the year type award. Uh, you know, foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, performance in a supporting role uh, went to Andrew Wincott as uh, Raphael. I didn't butcher that in Baldur's Gate three. If I said that right, uh, which I could obviously see it, you know. Baldur's Gate 3 just wins a lot of awards, but it by far blew everything else out of the water that came out last year. Uh, it's not really close. Yeah. Uh, their their family game went to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. No shocker. Might as well. Family second might as well just be a Nintendo award. <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> matter where, who it goes yeah. to. Basically. Whether it's the Game Awards or any other smaller awards, you, those family games tend to be Nintendo just because that's their... A lot of their games kind of market to fam, family-friendly games. Yeah. It's uh the Disney of gaming. Yeah, uh the EE Players Choice. Uh, I don't know what the EE stands for. Went to Baldur's Gate three. No shock. <laughs> uh, the animation went to Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, so I, it just seems like there's a lot of a lot of decent animation in that game. Like I've seen some trailers, but I've not actually played the game. Uh, music went to Baldur's. The entertainment went to Ticha. It's another probably indie game I haven't heard anything about. What's it called? Uh, Ticha. It's T C H I A. I was trying to pull it up. I guess it's got a Steam page. I'm gonna switch out that auxiliary cable. You know, some weird yeah, it's back a and forth tro- stuff. Yeah, so it's a tropical open world adventure. Looks like a island, single player island survival type thing. Uh. But yeah, it's just another it's another indie game more or less. Oh, uh, I don't know what the whole meaning behind game beyond entertainment even means, but I mean it's a it's an award segment. <laughs> uh, technical achievement went to Tears of the Kingdom. 
which feels like it eh, we're giving too much to some of these other games let's let's give it to a different game because i guess seen that easily go into like another Baldur's gate 3 or some of the other games yeah. that came out like hi-fi rush or something 100 percent um Performer in a lead role went to Naji Jeter. I yeah, guarantee I butchered that. Uh, as Miles Morales in Spider Man Two, that's a game that is not really getting a whole lot of awards. It's not. It's I can't not. remember. No, I, I mean it uh, hasn't I, gotten I, a lot. From my understanding, it just wasn't as good as the first Spider Man game, first Miles Morales Spider Man game. I think and, the, you know it's just kind of hard to do with sequels. I think the problem is, yeah, it's just not different enough. It's not necessarily a bad game. Yeah. It's just like, it feels like more of the same. Uh, so I don't know. Too much of the same. Because there can be like, hey, well, I want more of the same, but you still need to change it up for, to be a different game, not just like extended DLC type thing. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me. I haven't even finished it, so. <laughs> Fair enough. And then obviously their their best game went to Baldur's Gate 3 because it wasn't going to go to anybody else. Yeah. No. Wins the most awards like it does everywhere just because it's it's not the standard crap that AAA gaming kind of pumps out. Yep. Yeah, I mean, not surprising at all. It kind of sweeped all the uh, the different awards this year, it seems like. Uh, I mean, and, you know, great game, so. Not, yeah. Not Do you have anything to say on any, of the, on any of the awards? I just kind of went through the, the list of kind of what went, what won what. No, I mean, none of it's really shocking to me, you know. It all seems like kind of most of the other awards, like uh, most of them that we've talked about. Family awards always Super Mario Bros. Wonder or uh, some yeah. Nintendo game. Yeah, some Nintendo game. So, yeah, I mean that's fair, but you know, for Baldur's Gate three to to win game of the year there, I think. Yeah, and I obviously didn't get to see it, but as I was looking at some other stuff, I guess one of the the other big things that happened here uh, was they uh, they played a performance of the late goodbye for Max Payne two as like moderating everybody that kind of died the past year in the game industry as a whole. Oh, it's kind of like a like a general thing that you don't really see from a lot of game awards. Oh, well, that's yeah, unless that's it's like really one cool. really big person. Yeah, you know what? Actually, that you know, I think that is like a thing that they do every single year. I think I've seen that before. Um, yeah, I that's really watch the BAFTA. So I don't, I don't know if this is like a a yearly thing they do. I I feel like it is because I, I think I've seen something like that before where they they touch on anybody that's kind of passed in the industry or. Uh, I mean, that's kind of just. I, I don't want to sound callous, but that's kind of guaranteed every year. You're you're gonna lose somebody from the industry. It's yeah. such a big industry with a wide range of, of people that work within it it's just kind of bound to happen it ain't going to be but, a I mean, it's, big it's, industry of people for long nobody's going to want to be a game developer you're going to get axed you have no chance of survival in this industry i mean that's what happens when you know gaming companies just uh don't Become don't money deliver hungry. games that don't make products that the the consumer wants constantly and try to try to force things that the gamers you know very vocally said they don't want yeah, Unless it's, it's just more of a Madden or FIFA, because those just bankroll money. They don't have to do any work. <laughs> Let's just update not. update the stats every year, and we're good to go. Do you remember the Legacy Edition bullcrap they were doing for like a long time? Like they did it. They no. were doing it on the Switch. I'm so never. I was never big in 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 Madden or or in FIFA. Like I played those games, but like I play it for like a month, and then I'm like, I'm not gonna touch this for like another ten years. Yeah, so like they would do these legacy editions and they basically were the exact same game. Nothing changed except stats. And they were doing that like when the <laughs> on the Switch, like bringing over like the exact same game. Um yeah, and literally they updated nothing but stats and players. That was it. Uh just to make sure one got out. <laughs> so that's all that most people really care about. They just want the updated stats cuz the game we can make a new game, but it's just going to be a copy, and it's going to look exactly the same, so what's the point? FIFA 23 Legacy Edition, FIFA 22 Legacy Edition. They did it. They were doing it on the Wii. That's where I, like, knew about it first. FIFA 15, like, they were still making FIFA then. It's Legacy Edition. Yeah. Same game for, like, five years. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, to be fair, if you're playing those games, it's, like, you know, it saves you money than having to buy the same game at sixty dollars every year. How does this unless save you want to buy it a year behind and then it's just like five dollars? 
see yeah that's the crazy thing like how much do you care that the stat like how much does that actually i don't know because i don't play these I mean, games how much does it sure actually it affect the game like what you just need to update the player stats update rosters that's really all i need to do year after year because they don't do any it's not like it was you know in 2008 or 2010 where there was like massive jumps in innovation of what you could do in the game year after year the sports game once it once essentially it's ea owns the rights constantly so there's no after a while there's no incentive to to grow the spend more money on a game that's gonna make money than just we'll just update the roster we're gonna stop being innovative within the industry because there's no competition nothing pushing them forward to make it a newer better product it's and kinda, obviously how how much can you really do with a sports game after a while yeah i so like I was looking here, uh, they had um, the Legacy Edition on the 360 FIFA 18. You know when the the Xbox One had been out for quite some time at that point. Uh, that was yeah. two years away from the Series X. Crazy. It's sixty two ninety nine on eBay too. Oh lord, yeah, just diving into all these Legacy Editions. I, I think that's absurd to me, but. I, that let it's very scummy i think um i mean it's ea as a whole they got to be selling something because pe- i mean they wouldn't keep pumping them those out what it's probably like they absolutely make... no work either so they're like i don't care what yeah we sell you know fifty thousand of these we're good <laughs> maximum profit off of minimum effort and obviously if it didn't make money, they wouldn't do it. So they're clearly making a lot of money off these games by doing this. The most expensive part is coming up with the cover and paying for who's going to be on the cover. Well, I mean, all that comes in, it's not the actual game. It's the uh, its the online portion. Because I know with the FIFA, it's like the, the, the ultimate team or what, like they both games are like the same version of where you essentially buy, you're, you're buying characters to play online and stuff you like that. You buy like that. character that's where packs, that right? Or something like that. Yeah, it's the whole mixture of loot box and the whole mixture of gotcha, more or less. I, I haven't played a FIFA obviously, game in like 15 years, if I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> obviously, it gets a lot of criticism, but outside of the EU, it's not really targeted by 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 companies and, and well, not companies, but like governments to like regulate the whole concept of loot boxes i will say this essentially gambling if it weren't for europe a lot of things are changing because they are they are like seriously going after a lot of stuff so like apple now with the new um iphones they come that come out they have to have the USB-C now because of the whole european thing uh yeah they so, want everything standardized across the board we, as it should i mean as it should be like their ipads have my daughter's iPad has USB C. Like, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, things like that. But, like, they seem to be the only country that are taking action on this stuff because, like, it, they're the ones that are bringing now all the, the loot box bull crap back into the spotlight and kind of, yeah. like, trying to get this stuff because it's ridiculous. You actually, man. Is like, these call it out for what it is. It's virtual gambling. It's what it is. It, it uses the it exact is. same mechanics as gambling and casinos do. But of course, it's the Europe because you know U.S. is just you know we don't care, and we have too many other things to be devices o- divisive over and not actually do anything. Right, right. But I mean that that goes deeper than that. It has to do with you know how much like food products does like Europe ban, but you know the U.S. like no, nah, you can eat as much of that as you want. You're, you're fine. But it's like banned in like every other country. Exactly. Yeah. And like, or I don't know if you know this, but like uh, I know for for sure that in the European territories in Japan. I know at least that much. I don't, I'm sure that it's this way other places, but like, if you look at just like the McDonald's ingredients are entirely different there. They don't have all the processed bull crap that we and have here in our they're, they're fast like, food. You can't do it, but they actually here, use real sugar in their products, not, not, not corn syrup, which I, I hate and I hate how it tastes personally. Um, yeah. Yeah. Once you add something with, with actual like sugar cane sugar and something, obviously sugar is a whole, in excess is not obviously not good for you, but just like raw tasting something made with essentially an artificial sweetener versus actual sugar tastes completely different. I one hundred percent, yeah. I mean, they I don't know if they still have them, but you can like buy those Pepsi's or whatever that had like the real sugar in it for a while. I don't know if they still oh, sell. Yeah. Well, that. that was before I just stopped drinking soda ninety nine percent of the time altogether. As it's you very should, rare that I actually get soda. Essentially, just cutting out like a lot of sugar and as much processed foods. Drink I'm a lot of rice and yeah. chicken. Got to get that protein up. Yeah. I just drink a lot of protein shakes right now. Oh it's getting kind of boring. It's getting kind of boring. 
I don't know, it feels kind of artificial. I'd rather eat protein out of actual. I mean, like, actual. I would too, man. But vegetables. stuff's expensive. <laughs> for you know that many times a day, I was told I, I mean, need to have is... 160 grams of protein a day for for my age. Oh, Height and it's not as hard as to, to get as you think if you like properly like we're, we're like meal prep and stuff like that. Essentially, I cook I on am. a Sunday and portion up all. That's your meals. what I'm doing. I I am. I'm yeah. prepping up a meal every yeah, single day. Yeah, but considering day, like one a meal. box of, but considering like a box of cereal cost me damn near six dollars. It's not cheap oh. to just eat eat junk food anymore. Well, I don't so buy everything's yeah. expensive. I don't buy. Yeah, see, I haven't had cereal in like ten years. Um, uh, but I'm with you. Like I've cut out a lot of stuff. Like I have a couple sodas. Later in the day, and it's zero. Even I don't even want to have that. I'm trying to cut that out, but it's it's like it just it's kind of interesting how like some of these other countries care so much about this stuff, but meanwhile here it doesn't matter at all. You know, none of it's like it's not even a thing. Oh well, we have too many other things to to be you know performative media over of to complain we're, about. We're worried about building the next casino. That's what we're worried about. We're worried about the next country we can bomb. Yeah, and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Freedom, baby, <laughs> sorry, uh, I went off of the tangent. No, no, no. I I enjoy it. Just keeping the show open. Um, so I saw this. Is just kind of a funny thing. I figured, why not mention it? Uh, GTA Six trailer got a live action remake. Um, saw this on. Hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch any like- of it? I didn't get the chance to. I like I saw that. And I was like, I need to watch that, and then I just you never actually got around to actually pulling it up. Or you get distracted with other things. The only thing I was at work when I saw it, I'm like, I should look that up, and like every other thing that I see just kind of like falls off, and I end up not not actually watching it. It's, it's like a, a month later. It's really uh, it's funny because they pull in like you know how they did for the trailer like those news segments. Uh, it was like kind of the news segments with like the old woman. Like a bunch of stuff was based on like real crap or whatever anyway yeah. so uh yeah they're like pulling in a bunch of like news footage and stuff for it and then like they're re reenacting it uh to a t it's 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 pretty like, funny hey, let's let's go to florida go to places that look like this and let's just recreate this whole the whole thing yeah <sighs> that's essentially what they did it's what it looks like florida's like a, a, its own country man i swear it's like its own country <laughs> Like the, every time you hear something like the Florida man, you're like, oh, this is gonna be crazy. Oh god, I I Hopped swear, up on, like, uh, Florida's up on bath salts or something. <laughs> crazy. I'm gonna place. eat someone's skin and then go wrestle a gator. I'm gonna add it's, it's like Florida for real. <laughs> oh man, interesting. I guess this is a uh, not a little little sad. Uh, not as not as funny, but apparently the rumored uh, Nintendo Direct in April may not actually be happening, uh, according to Pedro Hen- Henrique Lutio Lipe. He's got a really long name. Uh, because by his moniker as, as Brazil Online. Yeah. Uh, so apparently back in mid-February, he had a major scoop that Nintendo uh, internally delayed the Switch 2 until 2025. The claim was subsequently independently corroborated by apparently some media outlets. Uh but apparently it also came out, I was like, eh, it's probably looking like it's going to be like June, maybe July at this point for the next actual direct type That's, thing. But obviously this is yeah. all, this is all rumor. We obviously, well, we don't ever really know until like a few days out for a direct anyways, but yeah, that's, I think <sighs> June is like the next big, big target window right now. That's normally when we have a direct. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm interested I guess the main thing for me is I'm interested to see how they sort of cap off the year with the Nintendo Switch before they make the Switch 2 announcement. And also, obviously, interested in when they're going to make that announcement. Um, I would, I'd say if they're going to do it, probably like they did with the Switch, you're probably going to get it about six months out from the actual release. Which would Nintendo be doesn't like just releasing about stuff, any like... time because it's going to be holiday season. Oh, well, I guess now they're that's rumored for next year. I forgot. It's, it was, well, it's a rumor. We obviously don't really. Yeah, we know. don't even know. They didn't announce anything. So I'll say if we don't get an announcement in June about the Switch Two, it's not going to come this year. I agree. With fact. I agree with that. If they're yeah. if they're if they're aiming for for a holiday twenty twenty four, we probably hear about it in June because they need enough marketing leading up to it. Uh, but it, uh, yeah. unless it's like a, a a Metroid property, we don't hear about stuff like a decade out in advance. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't I'm know still why salty they about that. I still don't know why they did that. This, that doesn't make no point, sense. 
if the timing lines up, it has to be a launch title at this point. Why would it not be? That game's been in development for what? At least four years at this point. What was it? Twenty nineteen. Four years. So, yeah. Five years. Feels like it's been longer than that. But yeah, I, I think you're right. Twenty nineteen. What they originally right. announced it in twenty twenty seventeen, and they came out about a year and a half later, like early 20, 2018, okay. 2019. And, and said, said they rebooted it. Was scrapping it. and redoing yeah. it. So it's it's had a, probably, if you count pre production, which probably lasted about a year, four to five year development cycle, including the whole pre production, which probably took several months to actually iron out what they wanted to do with the game and stuff yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. They've I feel like that game is why they've moved away from doing that and they now announce stuff like, you know, pretty much right before it's gonna come out. Like you've got maybe a month yeah. or two or you know, sometimes Which it, I think is probably better because you yeah. don't have to deal with months or years of over hyping a game waiting for it to come out and then more than likely being disappointed because you overhyped the crap out of a game. Yeah. Um uh, but I would say Probably be a good sign for the for the next Metroid game and probably the next Switch if we were to get like the like a a, a two a Metroid Prime two and three remake remaster HD remaster whatever they're gonna do with it announcement like hey this is coming later in the year type thing because uh, you, you you get the feeling they want to release those games in lead up to Metroid Prime four just because you know the the story in those has to lead up to it I don't imagine it's gonna be a full g- from the ground up with one. Uh, but I could imagine them doing something with with two and three. Yeah, I it, it's not Metroid Prime Hunters too, so I kind of don't care. <laughs> so stupid. I love that game, man. Uh, I I was I gonna do. I was gonna talk to you on here. Um, so there there's some sort of exploit to. I'm trying to fix my lights, so bear with me here. Uh, there's some sort of exploit to be able to play that um online again. And I think I may have talked to you about it before, but currently, since the, I guess we might as well bring it up, the Wii U and 3DS obviously um, went offline on Monday. So from my understanding, might, we might have to look this up to verify and double check that I'm right on, on this, but from my understanding right now with the Wii U, you can actually just type in a different DNS and you can play online and no problem. Um, the 3DS, I think you have to actually get the homebrew channel, which is a little bit different. Um, so you have to like go through. So you do have to like mod your 3DS. And I guess with the yeah. Wii U, you don't have to. You just type in a certain DNS and you can go online. And it brings back Miiverse and everything like everything's they said from what i saw 73 percent of everything through that dns is um back online the only stuff that isn't is stuff that apparently like in some way connected through nintendo and like worked like that i don't know it's like 73 percent of it you can just go online and play with a, a simple dns that you put in um for the wii u I guess 3DS, you yeah. do have to get the homebrew channel, which I plan on doing and setting up. But um, is this still tapping into like Nintendo servers, or is this gonna, supposed to like connect to like a like a fan server type thing? I, from my understanding, it's like connecting to Nintendo servers. It's not like a fan. It's like this was like an immediate. Th- they found this out before the Nintendo. S- so if you go on Pretendo's website, they tell you. Uh, Pretendo put on there that hey, we were holding this news so that Nintendo doesn't take this away from us, but we found an exploit for you to be able to still play online. Uh, you know, they, they they knew like a few weeks before, but didn't announce it until the day uh, that okay, it went so is this just for is this just the ability to play online games or to access the actual games? Then I guess that's a good question to kind of like, kind of like clarify. Well, I mean, like if you got the game, you could play. You can all- no, but you have you have to have to, you have to have the game to play it online. It's just like an online server to play the yeah, game, not to like yeah. download them, correct. And stuff like that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's not not to like get the game. No, I just, but, I just wanted to, to, to clarify that. But you can mod your your Wii U to do that. You can. There is a, a way to do that as well. Um, but like, if you want to just stock play your games online, you can like simply type in this DNS and you're good to go on the Wii U yeah, for so most according games. To- yeah, so according to them, for both their 3DS and their Wii U, they're about 73% uh, percent through all the progress for all the games. I guess the only games for sure they got at 100% is the Friends for Wii U, the Wii U Chat, Friends for 3DS, and Ironfall Invasion. Yeah, 
The Kid Icarus Uprising, man, that's the one I think that's to me the most important. I think online game on the 3DS. It was just uh, oh, fair enough. So good. I mean, just absolutely amazing. Um, but I think most people would agree that's that's one of the most important there. Uh, Mario Kart Seven, of course, people want to play. I, so I was watching a bunch of people were streaming that final day, and like, uh, I watched um a video today on Twitter of like the final footage of somebody running a race, and of course, it was Rainbow Road on Mario Kart Seven. Uh, so yeah. that that was that was interesting to see. Uh, it's it's kind of sad, man. It kind of sucks. It's like. Here's a good chunk of my my life I spent online with some of these games. Like looking through the list, I'm like, man, I played these so much, I played so I many mean, of these online for such a long time. It's kind of inevitable as long as you know they allow the fan server, which they should support because they're not going to support it. The they they've moved on. This is now just you know leaking. It's just leaking money. It's, it's not. It's, it's costing the money. They're not actually making money off of it, so it makes sense why they're going to stop supporting it. But I guess the the fact that we have fan servers coming up and they're, they're going to fill that gap, you know, is always, you know, nice to see. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, interesting stuff there, but that's cool. 73% of the way. Um, yeah, you, you just double check on the 3DS. I mean, even by the time this comes out for audio, you know, maybe it's um, updated since and they're further along. But I do believe the 3DS, you do have to get like the homebrew channel on to be able to do this from my understanding um yeah it's interesting that like they found this before it even went offline like that I, that was super interesting they're like we're holding yeah. this till the day that this is over and then we'll announce more it. or less yeah fair enough so, uh i do have a different question obviously we're taking like a like a left turn uh did you ever get around to playing the stellar blade demo at all no, I downloaded it and I haven't got to play it. Have you? I downloaded it, but because I've already got the game pre-ordered at GameStop, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait till the game came out. Like, it's still it's on my on my PS5. It's just sitting there. But I was like, I was like, ah, it's about two weeks. I just pre-ordered. It. Like, I'm just gonna wait because I don't want to play it and then be like, oh, I want more of it type thing. Uh, nor do I want to play the it. demo and then it kind of potentially spoil. Like, I just want to go into the full game, get the full experience kind of blind that's really what i like about playing a lot of games i don't like watching trailers like i like to go into a game as blind as possible outside of just everything else that we get but apparently uh, shift up was asking some players to apparently go easy on the demo as apparently several players have already put over 50 hours on the oh, demo geez. alone that is insane i got i've got it downloaded i got I gotta play man i keep wanting to like I'm so behind on so many things. I gotta watch the new X Men episode. I, I want to watch uh, Fallout. There's just there's so much. Oh my gosh. Uh, I've got to download though. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm excited. I think it looks really good. Um, yeah. I mean that that's a good sign. If there's people that are putting that much time into it. Yeah. That's somebody that really likes the game. Because apparently, according to or uh, or. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have I, to I know say you know anything? what that. Yeah. But according to Ampere Analyst, uh, Stellar Blade has reached a peak of 690,000 daily active users on the PS5, Dang. where the previous record holder for active uh, peak daily users for a demo was the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo, which accrued no around 380,000 no. players daily. That so that demo is insane. blowing up. Like, Dang. I can't imagine, like, the first, you know, the the first week or the first weekend sales that game's gonna have is gonna be amazing. Like I I could imagine within the first by like Monday, they've already they're already making profit. They made their money back on the game, and it's just raw profit at that point. It's so crazy because there wasn't like a ton of hype behind this game or anything before. I feel like all that all that media stuff, you know, of being a, a female like, character that's attractive, like really brought people. They're like, oh, this game think, actually looks good. They know how to, they they knew how to market their game and they knew that from the ground up, the the fans that wanted to play this game on top of the demo were gonna it was gonna spread by mouth because this this game blew up on social media between like you know you know X and Facebook Instagram and especially YouTube is blown yeah. up on top of all the other controversy because they had to have known this was gonna blow up especially the the attention from from games media which they had to have known were gonna target them they saw like well this is free advertising. We know what our audience wants, so we're going to use that and everything else around this game to just, you know, to help advertise the game. 
And then yeah. about a month out, let's drop a demo. Then you're like, oh, this is an actually good game. And then we can save money by not having to advertise. Those demos are really doing, you know, doing these games a, a service. I mean, honestly, like I, I kind of surprised. Yeah, surprises absolutely. me that we we still continue to get the amount of demos that we do uh for games but uh, well, i mean it, it does it serves a purpose and people are like oh this is actually good so i'm going to buy it i think we're getting back to a point where you you kind of have to start uh with the demo because you know with amount, the amount of games that fail and stuff like that and the amount of uh, animosity within the community about you know bad games subpar games broken games that launch it's like uh here you interested in the game? Here's a demo. Get you a taste. You'll actually, it's an actual good game. You enjoy aspects of it, so then you'll buy it when it comes out, and not yeah. wait months down the line, buy it at a discounted rate when we're just trying to, you know, make some money out of the game. Because obviously, yeah. you know, AAA gaming industry is just in a mess right now. If it's not a mess from a broken game, it's a mess because of all the ongoing, you know, you know, social controversies that, that are surrounding games, and then, you know stuff with sweet baby and all that other all the other stuff with the whole what they've done you know gamergate 2 stuff is just it's just put a bad taste in in triple a gaming as a whole i agree i agree i mean it, it's i don't i don't even know like it seems like ha a, more than half of the stuff that comes out is pretty negative around gaming right now it, it seems that way i mean to be to be fair negativity whether it's in in on for drama or in the news as a whole negativity sells more than in, in positive oh, always, stuff but always yeah then you see some other stuff and you know obviously there's a section of gamers that saw this uh obviously there's there's some people that saw an actual good game but just from what the game looked like they saw it as a countering to the to the like western game studios narrative for what they were pumping out and it's like i don't i don't want this i don't care about how realistic it is I just want an entertaining game that's not based in any kind of reality. Like I want a fantasy game. That's that's why I love my JRPGs, man. Like there's never any like crap you really have to worry about with any of those. I guess that moves well, I guess along. it depends on how new it is because then you get into the issue with a lot of games, and this is this goes into like anime and manga as a whole. But the whole um, Contrary to the deals with, you know, ad adaptation, especially with JRPGs, you know, translation, the, uh, well, this is not suitable for Western audiences based off my opinion, so we're going to change certain things. It's, it's an ongoing issue in that whole industry or that whole section as a whole. Uh, but obviously, the more people bring attention to it, the more you put pressure on studios to no fees or make sure these games no are properly, overdrive. you know, translated and adapted coming back over to the West. We don't want the same crap that happened. You know, even back in the 90s where games were censored to whatever degree here in the West. Yeah. It's the same stuff. Yep. I agree. I agree. Um, Yeah, I, I definitely got to check out the Stellar Blade demo. But did you see? It's interesting because it's like a non-trailer, but it's so cool, man. It's so cool. It goes through the history kind of of all of it. But the uh, visions of uh, Mana, the Japanese trailer, because people are getting hands. I've, I've heard about it. Oh, dude, it's so good. It's just it just goes. Is this through. a is this a new trailer type it's thing a, that came a, out? Or? Yeah, just just came out. Like I think oh, it okay. came out yesterday. Uh, but like yeah, it's a Japanese trailer and it has like people playing, kind of going through like the classic mana games, and like yeah, I, all these outlets. I watched the one of, no, sorry, what were you saying? I was just gonna say like all these outlets are getting you know, putting out like their their hands on stuff with the game and. I'm hearing nothing but good things. I I don't I haven't played a bad man a game so like personally no. you know I haven't played all of them but uh, I I love the series. I've got both of, is a refreshing both of the releases that came out on Switch, uh, the collection and then the remake of uh, I forget what man a remake was at right now but um, whatever one it was it came out on Switch. I can't think of it but. The trailer is really cool. It just kind of goes through the history. It's got some Japanese people playing the games and stuff. So I thought that was yeah. really interesting. I'm super excited about that game. Yeah, because no, I, I went back and was like, I saw the original trailer, like the announcement or whatever it was a few months ago, but I didn't, I hadn't seen the new one yet. But it, even that old one looked looked really good. Yeah, it looks so good, man. I can't wait. It's like it's the out, the ease what, summer, games and summer the, this year. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out soon. Uh, the ease games and and mana games like seem to never di disappoint me. 
Uh, same with the Dragon Quest games. Like, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I disliked in that series. Like, they seem to just always yeah. put out Always put something. out a banger. Yeah. Like, I, I'm never disappointed with, like, some of these series, you know. And then you've got, like, Final Fantasy, which is, like, a, cla- you know, classic series, too. But then it's, you know, sometimes it's, it's hit or miss with that one. But these other ones, it seems like just, I'm never disappointed. I'm always, uh, like, I can't wait for play that new ease game i've got that pre-ordered um i don't have oh, this yeah. pre-ordered yet i need to uh, but this will definitely be a day one for me like it just looks so good oh i mean yeah absolutely combat looks really good enemy design looks good uh how, how many of the mana games have you played i haven't played like i've played the original for like an hour or two really but i never i never went any further than that <laughs> and i played that like eight years ago dang it's just not like it, or hey, I don't know. I think it's just some of the I don't know. I don't for whatever reason I just didn't. I was like, it's decent, but there's like five other games I I really want to play, and I just kind of like moved on. Damn. I think it was really before I started appreciating some of the old uh, turn-based RPG. Yeah, I because there there's a big section where like I didn't really care for the old Japanese or the whole JRPG. It just seemed like too slow of gameplay for the 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 standard like i guess the best way to think of the whole like action combat like you think like a like a skyrim type thing um yeah yeah or even the or even a uh the arise game uh where it's 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 like active combat like i even now like i don't hate the turn base like i used to but it's still not the preferred type of gameplay i prefer to do interesting i didn't i didn't legitimately didn't know that i thought you liked turn based rpgs uh oh yeah so i was gonna mention that right now on prime three of the fallout games are free uh so you you can grab those on prime gaming i think it's i want to say it's one two and i grabbed them uh fallout three game of the year edition fallout new vegas and i don't know what the other one is off the top of my head but um also, I don't know if you saw, but they're doing that giant update to Fallout 4, uh, which is kind of interesting because that game came out in, like, 2016 or something crazy. Uh, I think it's older than that. Probably closer to, like, maybe that was closer to 2014. Like, it's an old game. It's getting a whole next-gen update and everything, and they're adding in, like, skins from the series, and but they're, they're like, doing a full next-gen update for it for uh, modern consoles and PCs. A so. next-gen update. <laughs> which means they they change absolutely nothing. It's just as buggy. You look at the Skyrim releases, never fixed any of the ongoing, you know, bug issues of the community for like a decade had long since actually fixed with the unofficial community patch. Never once put that in their in, in their game. It was so frustrating. This is Bethesda we're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, my 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 expectations are are rock bottom with that with that game studio. I I will tell you. I actually so I didn't care for Fallout 4 myself. I thought it was one of the weaker uh, games in the series. I, I love New then, Vegas, and fair, I love 3, but... No game will ever reach up to New Vegas. New Vegas is, is peak Fallout. Well, as far as Bethesda Fallout. Well, Bethesda's only made, what, three Fallout games at this point? Yeah. And only two of them are single-player. It's 3 and 4. New Vegas wasn't even developed by, by Bethesda, which is probably why it's the best game. And then there's the whole mess at 76 is. Yeah, oh, yeah I was going to say, the other one, 76, that you can get free as well. <laughs> so i i played it at launch i'm never going back to that game yeah apparently i don't care how much apparently they, they, they it's good it. now but i, I have no nah, it's, there's it's too, too late you've already there's too many you've already games. soured it and it's it's a whole life for life service or mmo light i've already got games that that fill that 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 game's never gonna, never gonna Here, fill. let's be fair though you did go back to no man's sky and that was the same ordeal that game was not good i already at had the game I, I just had to play the game. Like I didn't have to spend more money on a now working game where you, to some degree Fallout 76, at least for a while went the whole pay to win every update. You got to pay money for Fallout 76, just free update, free update. We're just going to keep working on the game. But if you own it, you own all these updates. Yeah. I and to be fair, uh, no man's sky wasn't developed by a triple a gaming studio. It wasn't with millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. It was developed by an indie studio with less than 20 people. I'm, Far more forgiving of that situation compared to a studio that that should have known better and had the resources to not have such a, a messed up game at launch. 
Ah, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, let's dive into a little bit. So CinemaCon happened, and oh, there's a ton of stuff there. Oh my god, like, here's a bunch to touch on. So, um, did you see any of that? Stuff we we briefly no. talked about it before with the the Deadpool Wolverine, but it, there was a lot more than that. It, it's obviously a convention for all like the movie stuff, and that's where like a lot of big announcements are made. Uh, but uh, two of them that I saw, and I'm sure there's plenty I missed. I'll have to try to pull it up. But one is that we're getting a Star Trek prequel. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, we did we already get that with Enterprise? It's literally a prequel. Yeah. So. It, to the yeah. original Star Yeah, Star it, it says, uh, Untitled Star Trek origin story will be a prequel to Star Trek's J.J. Abrams uh, stuff. So it's going to be a... Or wait. It, it's going to be J.J. J. Abrams prequel to Star Trek 66. So the original series. Well, because if you go to the original timeline, the prequel already exists from uh, from First Contact to Enterprise. It's just... That all the all the the histories there, unless you're going pre space flight, like it couldn't it, be in the original timeline. It's it, it that's already it's kind not, of filled up. It says it says so that we're clear, it will serve as a prequel to the 2009 origin story and a sequel to 2001's origin story. That's very confusing. Which is Enterprise? Well, the problem is Star Trek is technically like at least three separate timelines. Yeah, they're technically at, canon. I think there's you have more the original. Than that. You have the original with the. The t- like a handful of episodes that go into from multiple series that go into the evil universe. I don't know what they actually call it. And then there's the JJ back in time, changing the past <laughs> timeline. So there's technically two with the, you know, theoretically there's much more, but there's really like two main timelines. It's JJ's movies timeline and it's the original well, timeline. It's gonna it's gonna be set before Discovery, so it's JJ Abrams stuff. So we we know that. Um, I don't know. I didn't care for Discovery. But it does say I'm an, it says I'm a right here. Of that opinion. It says it's a prequel to Star Trek sixty six. So that's where it gets confusing. It says it's a prequel to the Enterprise Star, the original Star Trek series. It says it's a prequel to that. Well that's just that's just, you know, the that's just the original Star Trek and it's not I've never heard it called sixty six. I've heard it called uh something else. It's just uh no, that's just what Something I'm calling with... it right now, so I can we cannot get confused with saying Star Trek because it came out in 1966. That's I'm just saying. Yeah, but that. I've never heard it actually called Star it's... Trek 66. I, I have to pull this up. What's actually properly called? It's just called Star Trek. <laughs> it's the original series. No, it's, but I thought there was something else that it was called. I've never heard it called anything else. No, the, yeah, the original series makes more sense to be called than than, than 66. Yeah, I was so just know exactly what you're talking about. I, no, it was just a minor. I, my issue. It was with just, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was a little bit confusing, but it, it's, I don't quite understand because it says it's a prequel to Discovery and J.J. Abrams stuff, but it's also a prequel to the original Star Trek series. So I don't, yeah, I don't that, know. Because that's, that's literally very convoluted what, to me. This, so what? It's it's. I mean, in theory, there's like what? Uh, there's at least there's, three timelines. At least, yeah, we'd have to look it up. But I, because I, I was thinking about it, but like, I don't even think there's, I think there's maybe fifty years between Enterprise and the original Star Trek, if that, or am I? Is it closer to like two hundred years? Oh uh, god, that's the I only way it could fit. It's, because yeah. yeah, Enterprise is supposed to be their first, what their first warp five engine type thing, and it's, I don't think the Federation even exists in that in that timeline. Yeah, it says mid twenty uh, second century, and then jumps to the twenty fourth century. So. To be fair, everything once the JJ movies came out, I kind of stopped caring about any kind of Star Trek that's that's come out since. Yeah, uh, I, I I thought I mean, Picard was such a letdown of a series. I didn't even finish the first season. I watched like a few episodes, and I'm like, I absolutely hate this. This is not. I think this I not, watched. This is not the two. Star Trek that I prefer. Like, I, I think Star Trek peaked with Next Generation, but that's like that's a personal opinion. I I I might be in a minority here thinking this, but. I'm still the biggest fan of the original series myself. Uh, I no, like Next Generation a lot too, but I like the cheese factor of the original series. And it's like, too cheesy for me. It's like I'm like this. It's 1966, I just it's the mid 60s. It's hard to watch television. I grew up era. watching it. I grew up watching it too. I I watched it with oh, I didn't my dad and it. my grandma. So like I, I grew just, up watching Next Generation. So I mean, know, I watched that. There, probably I watched that too, but I don't know. As I, hard. 
I, I go back and I did it. I feel like, like early Star seasons, Trek uh, was not is is not supposed to be so serious. I mean, it's not supposed to have like I shall follow you a super crazy serious overtone because that's kind of like that's kind of like uh, why I like yes the original no. series. Like some of it's very Maybe. dramatic, but also some of it's like super campy and kind of cheesy and like you they're so playing just into because, it. So that's just because it's from the '60s. I feel like. I, it's, um, I think that's why I like it. I mean, I like a lot of and and like William old... Shatner. Just who William Shatner is at the end of the day, really. He's, he's kind of camping over dramatic, but yeah, <laughs> not necessarily is. in a bad way. But I mean, in because Next Generation can be some of the early seasons are really hard, hard, really hard, really dry to watch. But it, it's always always like this idealistic view of the future. Like this is what we could be. This is what we could accomplish, and how we like address certain issues type thing. Yeah, because I think of Next Generation and some of the other issues. I'm trying to think of the actual name of the episode for Next Generation, but it deals around uh, uh, what's it? It's not what is it? Data, data. Have you say his name? It's been a hot second since I've watched the series. I think it's data. Uh, where it's like they're they're actually trying to determine like whether he's an actual like a person or a machine, mm -hmm. and it's killing me the the actual name of the series, uh, the name of the episode. Oh, uh, I, I can tell you. But it was so very nice. uh, a lot of the episodes, especially with Next Generation, were. Uh, wasn't it what well, didn't I, don't, I wouldn't say it always took itself too seriously, but it always addressed uh, like tough social questions type thing. It did. Like it, it would just ask questions, but not like it was a very like progressive not say it's, type series. It really was. I mean, like for for the time, the first yeah, like was, on screen kiss of a a black and and white person, and like you know things I'll like say this. It, yeah, like, but it, it pushed didn't, boundaries. It didn't, it didn't bash you over the head with a propagandist message like you see now. It was like asking a question. Obviously, it had an opinion, but a lot of the time it kind of let you come to your own conclusion, whether you yeah. agreed or disagreed with the story itself. It was very, uh, uh, you know, here's here's a situation. Like, how do you come about it? Like, because some of these some of the questions, uh, and it's killing me because it's been it's probably it's been over ten years since I've actually watched it. It's killing me. But it would actually, it would just ask really tough questions. It didn't have like a straight black and white yes or no ask, answer. It'd be like, this is a really gray area. Yeah. Uh, whether it's, it's, you know, gray because of the morals behind it, gray because of, you know, some other things behind it. It was always, and it didn't always do this, and it didn't always take itself too seriously. But it, when it did, I thought it did it really well. I mean, it did that, so that in the that, original that series. Sense. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, it did that. I'm just it would like ask a question, with, like a political yeah. or... Uh, social because, question. Yeah, I mean that was like a social lot of commentary. Thing. Yeah, it was like a lot but of it, the thing with the original series where you know it might have it might it might have seemed you know outdated or like not at the time then, but it, like if you put it in the mindset of the time, like some of the things it was asking really represented you know the '60s and then early '70s and like I I don't know I, I always liked. I, and I like the next generation a lot. Um, but those are like kind of the two, those are kind of like my Star Trek. Those two. Um, I liked season one of discovery. That's all I watched. I didn't watch any more of that. It was, it was fine. Um, Picard just stopped watching it. I think I just kind of didn't feel any attachment. I didn't care for it much. It completely broke down what the original universe really was. And I get it. I just didn't, care for the direction they took it no but i was thinking of like the main one is is the, it's called the measure of a man it's season two episode nine where it asks whether or not you know data is like an actual like a person with with self rights or is he like a like a machine and he's property of starfleet essentially it's, it's kind of like asking that question yeah i love it I'm which i guess it. i think from when i talk to most people because it's early in this early in it's like that's like the best idea of what star trek was is like it really these, was yeah episodes. it really it really was i agree with that I know people and, and i'm not people like, hated the, the i'm not next like generation I'm, movies yeah i, I like them. i'm sorry what did you watch wrath of khan that's probably peak yeah uh, i, I peak, feel like it star is trek. i there are a couple of bad ones there's a couple of stinkers in there i like What's one and the... two but the fourth, the, the, whatever the fourth one is called, I think is like really bad. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Um, I've gotta, I, I have to pull it up. Yeah, I, I used to I'm, own them all on DVD, and I can't remember what it's called. But uh, so the I guess Voyage. as far as <laughs> yeah, so I guess the original movies or so what's it? Uh, the motion picture, then Star Trek II's Wrath of Khan. Star Trek III is the search for Spock, which may have been one of the, the weaker ones. Yeah, it is. Voyage Home, 
Final Frontier and Undiscovered Country. I, I think if I'm thinking of the right one, I I like the Voyage Home. I don't think it's I think it's one of the not one of the best ones, but I I don't know. I like that one. And that and Undiscovered Country I really liked as well. See, I don't even remember that one. That one's it's I definitely watched it cuz I remember watching that whole box set when I bought it. But I yeah. I don't even remember anything from it, but I'm not like the biggest uh, Star Trek fan in the world. Like if it, if it like was between Star Trek and Star Wars, I was always a Star Wars guy. Well, it's the uh, it, they're so the different though. They're has so to different. deal with the co- uh, undiscovered country deals with a little bit. From what I, I had to pull up just to kind of remember, it has to deal a little bit with the Klingons type stuff. But it's it's been it's been a while since I've watched that actual movie. Yeah, yeah I think the I, th- I think you're right. It has to be as far as me go. It's a uh, the search for Spock. I think it's Final Frontier, and then the original motion picture movies are the ones I didn't care about. I cared about like the least. Yeah, of those fair. movies. Rathcon was definitely peak of of any of the movies, and like I mean, it could arguably be like peak Star Trek period. Uh, I think it was great. It's such a good movie. It, like it holds up. It's like a movie you don't have to be a Star Trek fan. It, that's how yeah. I feel. Uh, but there was then, a, a ton of other stuff announced. Uh, I guess I can. Bring up the the other big one. Or, or no, there's a few that I saw. There's a lot. There's a lot. I know I'm not seeing all of them, but one big one. I, I'll save this other one next, but we'll we'll do the, this one first. Um, Joker, Folly Ado. So the Joker two sequel, uh, the one that we liked. Um, did you get to watch the trailer for that? Or should Harley and stuff. I don't think I did. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. You should uh check it out. I mean, I really like that movie. You said you did too, right? Uh, which was the movie again? Sorry, jo- Joker. Joker. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I I thought it was an absolute great movie. Not yeah. the. What's the second one supposed to be like a musical? That's what they they yeah, talked so about a while ago. They said it's like uh, it's not like a musical, but like apparently the. It, I heard it's that. like, I like a, that's terrible. I guess like. Somehow, like classic rock soundtrack, like plays into the film. So, like the film is, I don't know, it's not a musical, but it's like the music is a big part of it. Apparently, um, I don't. That, they're not going to just film. straight straight up making a musical, but apparently, like music plays a big part of the movie. Like it's directly tied into the movie. Is what I, I'm saying. I don't know if that's going to benefit or not because it's one of those movies that I'm like. You'd made a great movie. It was a weird don't, movie. Don't screw it up with a, with a sequel. It's one of the movies that would be, it's a really good standalone, but I don't know if I, I'm going to like the, the sequel to it. We'll have to see. Well, I but, mean, the, but the first one, while it, in a unique way, it addresses, uh, it addresses a lot of Joker, issues. but it also was, it's really heavily inspired by a lot of, a lot of like real world social issues. Yeah. That for sure. When the film came out and even still going on now, addresses a lot, a lot of issues. But I think it's a movie that'd be relevant for a while, but it's, I mean, was the last time you had a really good and thought-provoking DC movie? I was very what? surprising. Very surprising. And uh, what, like the, the, the original Batman trilogy from like 15 years ago at this point? I mean, DC is just disappointing right now. I mean, honestly, just it, as a whole, video games, in every aspect, DC is such a big letdown to me. Uh, I hope that something changes with that. I think the last... Good thing besides this was the Snyder cut of Justice League was good. Oh, um, but I could I, I, I had to verify I got the right name. I think outside of that one, the dark you have to go all the way back to Dark Knight Rises. Oh, one hundred percent decent. And that's not DC even movie. Like, and even that one is like it's not it's not as good as the the other ones. Uh, but it's but, better than but, a lot of the but other it ones. is one hundred percent. It is better. For sure, but I think that's the obviously. One. I think the the I think Dark Knight's probably the best of that trilogy. One hundred percent. You have to go back to the Dark Knight Rises because everything after that might as well just be crap. No, I agree. I don't think it's bad. I'm just saying, like, not, I felt like it's not bad crap like Batman Forever. It's just bad, bad, not hey, bad. Ba- good. Hey, don't look. Ba- Batman Forever is 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 a good film. <laughs> oh yeah, when's the last time you know? Uh, it's not Joker. It's the uh, what's the, what's Jim the Carrey? Riddler? Jim Carrey's the Riddler. Yeah, when's the last time the Riddler was in a Batman movie? They need and, and he had like a that's like a classic Batman he's villain. A, that's he's not the good, Joker. man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There, there was that. Um, and then we've got there's quite a few from the CinemaCon. I, I didn't realize quite how many actually beforehand, but the other big one 
th- there's more that I'm sure that we'd enjoy talking about, but I definitely want to dive into this because um, obviously I'm a big Transformers fan. So they announced uh, Transformers One. Um, it's an animated prequel revolving around Optimus Prime, like his original name is Orion Pax. Oh, I think is that does this have to go back? Are you talking about the the movie that's supposed to essentially go back to? The actual back war to Cybertron, pre- yeah, Cybertron, the whole war, and like how yeah. we actually get to the movies. Yes. yes, I hear, I hear that was a good, uh, like the whole concept of like, oh, we're finally going back to to this, but yeah. I guess we'll see what it's actually going to be like when they make it. Right, because like here's the thing, like I, I'm I'm such a massive Transformers fan that like the, the Bumblebee I thought was a good movie, but it it kind of like stood on its own, like it could be its own thing and sort of out but of. It kind of came out when they were just pumping out. Movie after movie, that I mean, just, most, the of off. Well, most of them are crap. Most yeah. of them are crap. The only ones, the only two I think that are really worth your time are the first one and Bumblebee. Legitimately, I think like you could skip all of the other ones. Like probably more or less. Um, the, the quality just progressively kind of drops off, or at the very least, maybe the first three live action ones. I don't even with know that that whole that. arc, but that that third movie was completely. I I hated it. Yeah, it I, it's it uh, it's just disappointing, man. Cause like that first one led you on where like okay, like these, these might be good movies, and even some people dislike that movie. But like I thought it was good. Um, but at the end of Rise of of the Beasts, the last movie, it kind of leads into knowing this was gonna happen. Like if it, I don't want to spoil anything, but like if you watch the end of that movie, you you get what I'm talking about. So um. I think this is great. I I think this is what they need to do, and like I hope that they do like actual justice to, um, Optimus Prime before he's Optimus Prime, and like actually filling out like Megatron as a character because I feel like they've always kind of botched Megatron and and pretty much all of the movies. I felt like he was just very stupid and kind of they almost made him like he was a throwaway character and like didn't really dive in because like. That whole story of Cybertron is actually like really, really good. And the comics and the animated series, like all of that. Like it's actually a really good story. And like seeing like the like actual that. fall of Cybertron is just like it's it's kind of crazy. So it's like we want this, but don't don't screw it up. Don't 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 screw it up. I'm interested to see too if they show Megatron as a gun, because I he was originally a good transformed into a gun, just a straight up gun, a pistol. Um, so I'm very curious if they actually go that route and, and kind of show like, I, they really, really need to dive into the Orion pack stuff. And before you came, became, um, you know, Optimus prime and stuff. Cause I think it's a really interesting story and like the sort of lead up to it that we haven't seen in any of the films, but it said, uh, Audiences will experience something truly spectacular with the story of Orion Pax, adding that Transformers 1 is going to reveal a side of this character that audiences haven't seen before. Um, At the release, haven't seen in like 40 years. Yeah. So, but but they're they're really pulling on the idea uh, that they are going to be filling out the character more than anything has, apparently. So, like, more than the comics or, you know, the animated series. But another thing, there wasn't just one Transformers thing. This this has been rumored for years. Uh, for, I think the first time the rumor came out was like 2014 or something crazy. But we got like official word that the G.I. Joe and Transformers crossover movie is happening. Like it's it's in development for sure. Paramount confirmed it finally. So I'm super excited about that because I also really like G.I. Joe and I used to read all the crossover comics and stuff back in the day. And like there are two franchises that really um, it, it it works. It doesn't sound like it would work, but it works. Um, if you like read any of the comics, you'd get it. And they did a lot of crossover like toy releases and things over the years and yeah. stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited to see that because I here's the thing about G.I. Joe. It is a franchise that is beloved by people that are older, <laughs> typically older than me. Um, but it the pe- kids today don't care about military stuff, so they don't care. They just don't care. It's not interesting to them. I feel like it's just they tried to like sort of re- 
revitalize it as a toy line. And there is, you know, an active toy line, but it's an adult focused toy line that, well, to that are like fair, premium figures and they aren't like for well, kids. They haven't made an actual like cartoon for it since what the 80s no there's been tons there's been tons of uh no uh, I, I know, i'm not, not that that hard into it yeah there's been a lot of of them uh trying to reboot it over the years and in the movies of course like i like the movie so much that i got a specialized dog tag sent to me in the mail for the second gi joe movie because there was like this mail-in offer from walmart you go like saying it's got my name on it. i still got it uh I liked that that second one. A lot of people did. A lot of people didn't like uh, most of them. Uh, I think the consensus is that people like the first one, and that's about it, as far as the movies go. I could be wrong on what the generalized public thought, but I know what I thought, and and yeah. I I dug it. Um, didn't like Retaliation, was- which was the uh, the last one. I think I did not like that yeah. one. There was another movie that I guess they was I didn't realize it was announced because I didn't realize this CineCon CinemaCon was even a thing, but apparently we're getting a sequel to a movie. I didn't even know we were gonna get a sequel to like twenty five years later. Uh, did you hear about the the Gladiator two? Apparently, yeah, we've known about that for a little bit. I had I didn't know idea this was even a thing. We I'm t- sitting like, we how do you make a about sequel it. to that movie? I that's what I I don't know. I don't get it. I said the same thing. I'm like, this doesn't it make told any story sense, and it's over. I mean, I get if you're making another Roman era movie, but then again, any movie that takes place after that is just in the fall of Rome or the fall of so, Western Rome, essentially. It's funny because there was, and I don't know the exact statement, but Russell Crowe put out a statement that he's like, I'm absolutely very happy I'm not involved in this project. He can't. His <laughs> character's I dead. I know. He it was like a joke. But I, They're going to use him to advertise the movie, probably, but I'm any sure. more than that. They're filming it in the exact same place, apparently. Um, well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that kind of makes sense. Like, just just for you know, for location and setting, it just kind of makes sense. Yeah, this one they announced this a little while ago, but I actually this was announced qu- quite some time ago. But they finally showed stuff from it about a month ago. Yeah. Well, because how many movies they announce and then it just you don't yeah. hear anything else about it, and it's just all well, of that they just kind of just kind of fizzled out. Yeah, like we. <sighs> I I don't know. I don't get it. I I don't get it myself. I don't know how you can do a sequel. It was, it was like a a one and done, like told its story and it was over. So I don't. Yeah. If anything, it just feels like they're gonna call it Gladiator Two just for the advertising to get people to come and watch it. Yeah. I, Which I, I don't. I don't think it would be a good. I think it's just bad because it's. I don't know how it could have any connection for it because even that was very. The footage uh, looks cool. Was, was hit. Yeah, but even the original Gladiator, it's a good movie, but it's historical fantasy. Like it's it's well, it takes real people yeah, and it completely changes the actual story. It's not like uh, any of the other Rome series or uh, either of the two series that deal with like Spartacus or something like that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, actually based in you know reality more than this movie was. It it looks like they're taking it serious. So I don't know. I'm I'm sure it'll do I don't well. Know. Because, well, I don't know if it's supposed to take place before or after this movie, because that's probably going to determine. I think it's, you know, I think it is after, but I, it doesn't really make sense because it, it told its story. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's confirmed yeah, we'll that see. it's not... a straight up sequel. There's what, like. 2,000 years of potential history were there with Rome? So, yeah, yeah I have no I, idea. I, I, I've never been interested in any of that era. Uh, I don't it just I have like like the midi medieval era and uh you've you've lost your man card. You might as well j- just hand it over. I I a man that doesn't have any interest in the Roman Empire. Do you, you want to oh then you really God. you really need to to dive into that then cuz you would be shocked if you you knew some of the stuff that was really happening then and what they were going to potentially cover in this film was talked about. I listened to it on uh Joe Rogan's podcast. And some of the Roman stuff, man, I don't, I don't know. There, I think there was a reason I wasn't interested in it. And if they touch on it in this movie, there's like two thousand years of of history there, from like what, from like what five hundred BC to, uh, uh, I'm trying to think like what the twelve hundred, thirteen hundreds, essentially when uh, so, Byzantium yeah. fell to the Ottoman Empire. That's a long time because the Eastern Roman Empire, we now we retroactively call uh. The Byzantines, when they never actually called themselves the Byzantines, 
which I will always forever have an issue. I've never heard of that before, but you dive in a little bit more of the history of men and the Roman Empire and get back to me on that next I mean, yeah, week. Yeah, Rome got super corrupt and super de- degenerate for, for big portions of its history and kind of led to its own downfall. Yeah, I don't know. The, the stuff I heard that like actually happened, I'm like, uh, this is why I wasn't into it. Well, like, uh, I mean, what do you, what do you, I, I, need, I, I need to know more exactly what you mean. It's I have, to, thing. I have to tell you later. I have to send you some articles or something because. And to be fair, what do you think of like Rome? You think more of the, the military history, less of the actual social history of, of Rome itself. Oh, this is, w- this is with the, the military. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> um, I know I'm being pretty vague there. I can't really touch on it. Uh, we also Too big. Get, like I don't even know where you're going. Yeah, uh, we also got one of the biggest ones was Deadpool and Wolverine. They showed nine minutes of footage. They got a bunch of quotes from the movie. Like uh, the big the big deal is that it's going to be rated R. Um, you know, people are kind of like, are they going to do it? Or are they not? Uh, it is going to be, and they said it's fourth wall breaking. So, no fees or minimums uh, and whatever no overdraft fees. That means Another that reason banking with Capital One is an even easier decision than this. Uh, well, I thought it was called third third wall breaking. Generally, I've never heard four. It's, it's that's it's always up in the fourth wall when you uh, talk to well, the audience whatever. directly. Okay. Yeah. Well. Anyway, it's gonna be that. Um. So what what are you thinking about about the movie? Did you watch any of the the footage or any of the stuff? I haven't. I mean, I think I watched like a like a teaser trailer for it, but that's about it. That was before they actually showed that stuff. But I mean, I'm I'm just by default because it's because of the of the of, of Ryan Reynolds and uh, uh, the Wolverine actor. I'm blanking on his name now. Oh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't. I, I blanked on the name. There's hope there, but as a whole, I think it's like the last gasp of a dying franchise. Well, the, here's what I said because I, I tweeted I tweeted this out yesterday. Uh, this has to be good, or I think my hope is entirely lost for the MCU because I have uh, the well, the I, Marvels, I, I, the movie, the Marvels, horrible. Yeah, horrible. Well, I, I, this would be like the one shining beacon in a series of garbage because that's obviously not going to change. That's just because of the actors and the kid and, and the two iconic characters you have. Uh, outside of that, I think you're just going to continue to get the same garbage that Disney's been pumping out for you know well, a decade at this we'll point. We'll see. There's they're they're saying otherwise, and uh, but one of the big things Kevin Kevin Feige went on stage and was dropping the f bomb left and right and said he could because it wasn't officially rated R movie. Uh, there was like a bunch of kind of quotes pulled from the nine nine minutes of footage. Most of it I can't say, uh, but it sounds like they are diving deeper than they have with. Deadpool's character, I guess it's gonna just straight up be rated R. Um, I, I mean, I feel like it has to be. You know what I'm saying? And and we got the announcement of the Fantastic Four movie, which comes out next year, which I want to be very excited for because I love the Fantastic Four. But like, we have hasn't we've got everybody... nothing but trash Fantastic Four movies. I was about to say like every movie that's come out for that, everyone's just absolutely hated. Four, they're because they've been terrible. Like there, they, we've never gotten a, a live action representation. It's been good. The Fantastic Four, in my opinion, back, some people like that to like very two thousands. Yeah, some people like that very first one, but even then, like it, you go back and watch it, it's it's really not good. Um, it's really not. It's that that second one absolutely got awful. And that reboot they tried to do, they tried to do it again. And it was it was even worse. I've only seen the original. The original Fantastic Four and then the Silver Surfer, the only two movies that I've actually seen. Yeah, that one that came out in like 2016 or something, absolutely god awful. I forget when it came out, but it was. That I, I pulled up, I pulled up the original one from uh, was it 2004, and it's got yeah. like a, it's got like a 45 audience and like a 28 critic score. Like everyone just absolutely hated it. Well, I, I'm saying this, this Deadpool and Wolverine has to be good because I, I hate, I hate that it's this way, but like. Um, in the MCU, man, I really like was really on board for like a long time. I feel like kind of the the end was end game for me. Like after that, it was like so hit or miss that anything was good after end game. In my opinion, I feel like that that whole saga there was like the peak. 
And but around the time that movie came out, like Hollywood as a whole just really started putting out a lot of crap in general. Like the writing across the board, even before Endgame came out, had started to like taper off and go downhill. Yeah, I. I I mean I don't disagree with you. Like I I watch so few movies that. But that was also the end of that 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 what that twenty film arc we were leading up to for like the last you know fifteen years or something yeah. like that since the very first Iron Man it led to that and I think for a lot of people like all right that's it the story's over like I'm I'm done you see you're conti- like there's more MCU but you're dealing with like B C D level uh uh Marvel characters that people just don't know and don't care about and they're not gonna go see well, you it. gotta like, the make Blue them- Beetle movie. Nobody well, cared because nobody heard about DC. it. That's <laughs> DC. Well, same difference. You know, you, it's the same concept, essentially. Well, I, I, you start I, bringing out other lower-level comic characters. You got to do it in the right way because, like, the MCU introduced, like, a lot of, uh, you know, bef- like, Endgame and before a lot of characters that nobody knew or cared about and did it in, like, a good way. Big ones. Yeah, but you obviously if you get your Iron Man, your Thor, your nobody uh, cared about Deadpool before the movie came out. Nobody, nobody cared about Deadpool as a character. There was like, not, not he was never like a big it character. Also, it also had Ryan Reynolds attached to it. Yeah, he, he's a really good actor. I'm I'm all it was, for it was just introducing a, it was a the new characters. Really well and, done movie, or not new characters, but characters that people don't know about. But they gotta they gotta do it in the right way. And but they're they're taking B C level characters and uh, terrible writing, and then they're just bomb after bomb. Well, the more the problem was, is for me was like in, that was a stupid move to me. Like none of that fair, made sense. I think there it's it's probably a mixture of that and as well as fatigue. Like you're just pumping out too many movies too, too many. fast. It's the Star Wars thing, man. Where well, people are just kind of like, I don't care. Like I don't. Most people most people probably only care about your your main DC, your main Marvel characters. Well, the, they don't care about the the lower quality ones. The other the other thing is too like it became a problem when they started doing those Netflix. I watched every single one of them. So like I like I said, I was very very into MCU at that time. But those Netflix like MCU series that got, you know, put out. So like you had all this stuff to keep up with. Like if you want to, and it, it all, it all tied together, but apparently that guy, and I cannot remember his name, uh, that played daredevil for the MCU series that was on Netflix is apparently coming back and is going to be like in the films or something. Right. I, I, or maybe it wasn't him that I saw, uh, (laughs) Patrick in the, the chat said pink Floyd, the wall, uh, (laughs) Uh, Mint Mobile, yeah, 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 Ryan Reynolds and Mint Mobile. I see all the ads all the time. I thought he sold Mint Mobile, um, but yeah, I th- this has got to be good. Is is basically where I'm at because I like I've just gotten to the point where this. I don't care. I think uh, uh, Captain was it Captain Marvel? Yeah. I think that would have been a, a much more well received movie if Brie Larson just hadn't said what she said leading up to that movie's release. I, I think she she tanked that movie. But let's be fair, Captain Marvel is just not a super well known well, Captain Marvel. Character. It's weird because like Captain Marvel and they did shift it in the comics before they brought it to the film. But Captain Marvel was originally a guy, and like I want to say I don't remember the year that. The, the, the comic came out, but I, I specifically remember the time because I was reading comics, but it was sometime in like the 2010s or something. They, they killed off the, the male, the male Captain Marvel and shifted it to a female in the comics before it came out the film. But like, I, I still don't remember exactly why that happened, but I feel like she, yeah, just like what she said, all, all the lead up to that was like a big problem. But the movie as a whole was a problem, in my opinion. I just, it, it yeah, just wasn't it didn't, good. It didn't. But I mean, to be fair, when you talk with a lot of people, like when you think of a uh, of Marvel, what you think of like what Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, those are like your, your, your A list comics. May I well Spider Man as well and stuff like that. There's a then, lot. I mean X Men. I'm like, who who cares about who 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 thinks about you know Ant Man or or Doctor Strange? Like, there's probably got their fans, but as far as like broad, well known characters, it's just not. They don't have the same reach. Yeah. And the problem is you've you've told like all your big selling character stories, and you have to go further down the bag, and then just by default, less people are gonna know and or care about it. Especially after Endgame. What sucks is that, like, with Endgame ending that MCU arc, that is such an old Marvel story 
like so you know it, it was you know that's a very old story like the 80s like that that's a marvel you know whole segment that went i don't even know how many films just leading up to this but that whole saga was a pretty short 80s series saga like there is just so much more to do and it sucks because it's like when you try to do too many things it becomes a problem in my opinion it's the star wars syndrome that's what I, i'm gonna call it i that's that's what it is you try to do too many mediums too many things at one time like you're, you've got these video games and you've got this tv shows you've got these books and comics and films and all yeah, but when you've got like when you got like three or four movies coming out every year that's the problem that's the problem it's just too it's much not exciting it's not exciting there, there is such a thing as uh uh it's, it's not like the, i'm trying to think of the word i want it's not like the like a scarcity but essentially you always want to be leaving them with wanting more because if you give somebody too much they just artificial don't, they don't scarcity I, I guess that's the right mindset is yeah is you want to be like kind of like that artificial scarcity dangling that care like oh where's the next one we don't want to like overfeed you too much too quickly and i feel like probably for, the biggest problem they have for this because it is so big i feel like two movies a year is good but even that is like kind of pushing it you know what i mean like yeah. that's kind of like how well, can you be now, so excited for you keep doing what you're doing or in the next few years or in the next decade, you, you, you have to probably start looking about, like, if you want to keep pushing out Marvel movies, you're going to have to probably do a soft reboot of this whole saga. And then look, you, you saw... eventually need to bring back, like, Thor and Iron Man and, and Captain America, but their stories are already told. Like, you have to essentially retell the story again in yeah, a new it's, way. Yeah, it's going to be so difficult to keep going. And, and like, D then DC tried to do it, and look what happened with that. That was just a... I, Man of Steel was really good. That movie was really good, but I feel like out of that whole saga, that was the only one that was like really good, worth watching. They're really like good about like telling individual movies. Yes, which like, they should. Do they don't need to do their the whole universe. I said just, the same thing about Marvel at this point. Stop with this continuing timeline. Just make a movie, and then just be maybe 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 a three Spider Man movies, and then you move on, or a Spider Man well, movie, or or, a, or an Iron Man movie, like I've, this like super in depth universe. I've missed some movies, so I've to me, I I'm might be weird in this, but it's like the same thing with like One Piece, for instance. Like I missed a couple of movies and like things that are involved in it. So for me, I'm like, man, I don't have the time to catch up on this. Like I'm just like becoming uninterested because I'm like four things behind. I'm like I don't want to yeah. jump in at this point. When I still got like four movies and a TV show to watch to to be caught up, and I'm like, it's the One Piece thing where it's like so many episodes for me. Like you know, I I just it's just too much. It's too much. It becomes overwhelming to me. Uh, and I yeah. don't want to. I don't want something that's supposed to be fun to feel like a chore to but like catch up like, and watch. Yeah, and then as as you watch it, the, the quality starts going down. I think the biggest problem is the writing starts becoming subpar because you have to pump out so many scripts so quickly, and because and they you have had the to writing be... strike too, so like yeah, and that lasted for however long. So I mean, like several months. Yeah. But like on top of that, but it's like you know people are getting burnt out. Like all these stories are connected. It's Disney Marvel. You want it to. You have to have this broad audience. So your writing is supposed to has to do like a. Uh, appease like the lowest common denominator so you're getting like the crappiest writing you could possible to, to appease to as many people as possible yeah and it just leads to just bad movies it does i agree it's, it's like just a too movie because it goes back to uh to the joker movie as uh as as it's not a super wide-reaching movie and it had its critics but it's a better story because it told a really in its own story, story. yeah its own yeah. thing that it could focus it had on a very specific that. target audience it wanted to hit and then it, if it got a periphery on that, great. But when you when you narrow it down your audience and you stop trying to accommodate everybody, you you just have better writing, you have a better story. Yeah, you have to stop spending three hundred million dollars on a movie. It's the like, same it's thing just, with yeah. games. I mean, like it's yeah. it's the same problem. We're getting in all mediums now. Like I feel like there's a problem in every sort much, of entertainment medium. It's too much of a heavy rely on CG that's that's driving. That's like get back to practical effects. You that's can where save I'm at. Money. Oh my god, I love practical effects. I, the CG is not inter like it's a, a horror movie that they use a CG for like the the character. It almost like throws me out of the experience. Like that was the thing with like classic horror is that like they didn't have that to do. Like they didn't have a budget to do that. And like it takes me out of it when I see like 
for instance, that last uh, the Ring movie that came out, like it, the entire thing was like CG, and it just threw me out of the whole. Like I'm not CG is not scary. I was trying to think of something I saw recently. It's killing me. Uh, what is? Do you remember in the Godzilla universe uh, that that realistic looking man character? It was like it looked like a like a giant suit on a person. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Is it the one you I told you about? The, oh, what's his name? The one that looks like Ultraman. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to think of the name. I'm the one that told you they're... about it. And I'm forgetting. Yeah, I uh, know. Ah, uh, I can't remember. I I don't know why my brain's not working tonight. Um, I'll, I'll look it up. But uh, what, what were you trying to to say about it? Well, because there was like an actual short that I don't know if we if we talked about before that came out like within the last few months, where it was Godzilla versus uh, that that Ultraman look like where they were actually fighting, but in this short they actually went back and in like twenty twenty three twenty twenty four did like the old you're gonna put on a suit because I think the Godzilla suit was from the uh, was from the Ultra like the the Ultra War movie from like two thousand four mm-hmm. like the actual suit. And they essentially, on a practical effect, like old Godzilla, they just had people put on a suit and then, like, fight each other with an actual full-on set. But with, like, cinematics and, like, the evolution of filmmaking, like, taking, like, an old, like, 80s Godzilla with the actual city that you're destroying where you're you're obviously in a suit, it just looks so good. And there's a short of it on YouTube that I saw. I just can't think of of that character's name. It's killing me. Yeah, I I don't know uh, why I can't either because like I've talked about it a few a few times and I always liked them a lot as a kid. I, I, my br- my brain second, is sure literally could, not working tonight, but I'm sure I could dig through my my YouTube history. I have to go back a few days. Oh, uh, man, yeah, it's uh, I I can't remember. But uh, speaking of Ultraman, did you know that that there's a new Ultraman movie coming out? Did you see that an animated I I, movie? I, I, yeah, I did. Though I've never watched an Ultraman movie before, so. It's well, still kind of new. It's oh, it's jet. It's jet. Yeah, Jaguar. jet Jim or, or jet Jaguar. Yeah, jet Jim. Yeah, jet Jaguar. Yes, yes. Uh, did you but watch a, the uh, first episode of the the Chibi Godzilla that I sent you? Know, that's like, expensive. I did. I'm sorry, I didn't really care for the a whole lot. What it tells but, a story though, man. I know it does. I'm just I'm not. It's just the not that my favorite product. But it's so good for the jet Jaguar. Obviously, the the YouTube video. It's all in Japanese. But yeah. if you go to the Godzilla channel on YouTube and go back, it came out about five months ago. It's a about a thirty second clip of Godzilla versus uh, uh of Jet Jaguar, and it's shot on an actual like I don't know if this is gonna be an actual movie or it's just like a, sh- a short they did you or have something. To send it to me. Uh, but it's like actually shot. I mean, there there is some CG for like Godzilla's like like uh, like atomic breath, but it's actually shot like they're on an actual built set that's destroyed for people in costumes oh. and that apparently like that, that godzilla suit is from the from you, that 2004 movie are you talking like about same... operation jet jaguar is that what you're talking about it's all in japanese i can't read it it might yeah be. yeah okay i think that's what you're talking about uh yeah it says watch the all new jet jaguar shorts so it's about 30 seconds long right yeah and it looks like they're actually destroying like an actual set itself because I look at that like, oh, wow, You instead of the cheesy, we don't have a lot of money, you take like modern filmmaking techniques on an actual set with probably some overlay or CG, and you can make those old 70s, 80s style Godzilla movies or, 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 or kaiju movies look really good. I mean, I... And obviously, you know it's a set, but you look at that and like... I love that, You could that, turn this into an actual movie. I miss... Because it goes back... It miss goes back Godzilla to the whole like of, that. ...of practical effects. I, like, there's still... A, a, an art form there that's that's kind of missing that's what i i mean that's the reason i love godzilla to begin with it, it you know what it's i mean cheesy but who cares that's yeah. why i loved godzilla i loved the suits and the practical effects that was a whole i mean that was kind of like the concept of why i liked it and got into but it but i as much as i like like uh king of monsters or the uh what's the the, the new world new empire movie godzilla yeah. kong mm-hmm. and then like minus one like those styles are really good I saw this. And I'm like, I would enjoy like a full length movie like this, like a like a Godzilla, yeah, Jet Jaguar movie it shot sh- like this. Minus one kind of shocked me that that they didn't go that route because it. 
I don't like. Then again, it, it's sh it's shocking just because it had really well written characters because they're the main focus of the story. I, it's a, just a, like I'm surprised film. that they didn't go that route for the Japanese Godzilla movies that we're getting now, knowing that because like you saw like how they did minus or not minus sorry Shin Godzilla right. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan or whatever, but you saw the way that they did that, and it was it had that sort of atmosphere again to I think it. They, I think to revitalize the whole Godzilla, because obviously Hollywood's doing their own thing, but as far as like Toho Godzilla, they had to do something new to revitalize interest. Because even if we say we eventually down the road got like a, an old school Godzilla movie with a, with an actual set and a dude in a in a costume. You know, mirroring that with like really well developed Hollywood CG style Godzilla, I think would be like a decent formula type thing. I think because then you get like too. the the old style to kind of supplement. You know, I don't know if it's cheaper. I don't know how it would, you know cost well, of, of making like a set like that change. It's much cheaper compared to like full CG, but it would be yeah. a really interesting uh, dichotomy to start having like say Toho films went back and forth between like a minus one style story or the Shin Godzilla story compared to. This uh, uh, Jet Jaguar little short they did go back to, like the the callback to the '80s, like put a dude in a costume and have him just destroy a set yeah. in the process. Yeah, I, I agree. I would love to have With, both. Get be getting both. Like you're getting both different types of Godzilla, totally yeah. different interpre interpretations. But with modern of filmmaking the, and even like modern CG to some degree, and and some overlays you could do, you can make an old school style film like that just look amazing. You could, yeah, yeah, you could. I mean, Maybe they had the, like me some, wanting that style of film. I, I told you about Final Wars when they brought Zilla in. Zilla was CG. <laughs> that, yeah. So, in the, uh, you reminded me actually of the movie. So in that short, it's apparently that Godzilla costume is the same Godzilla costume from Final Wars. Oh, okay. Like it apparently it was just that well because most people are like, oh, that's a really well preserved Final Wars, uh, uh, costume. Like for like twenty years. Wow. 20 years later, like apparently that suit was that well preserved, or they were able to, to touch it up. Or something I'd be like that. curious how, how many of the suits are left because a lot of those, like even when they were pumping out a movie every year type of deal, yeah, like a lot of those suits they still changed or had to make an entirely new suit, even though they were doing it well, very cheap it, and pumping them out. Like they would, it depends on whether they got thrown out or they got sold to like collectors because it's like I would like we're to not know. use the suit again. I honestly, that is one thing I've never even thought about looking up. Like, hey, what suits are left in in all of the you know? Because there's there's so many. There's been, I mean, tons of. Could you different imagine suits. like a like a a high quality trailer for Godzilla and it's like this old style? Like yeah, how many would just throw off so many people like wait what this isn't cg like what's going on kids, so the, kids the would mouth be confused opens, the mouth opens the old school godzilla roar from like the 80s comes out essentially or, or from final wars it's kind of like what is going is that an actual set i what feel is going on like you can't imagine the amount of uh attention like a movie that would, would draw i i agree i feel like i've really gotten you into godzilla and this has become a godzilla podcast <laughs> i'm looking on here at, at uh zilla and like size comparisons apparently other than like that anime Godzilla where he's like literally a planet, uh, like yeah. Shin Godzilla is the the biggest Godzilla. Didn't know that. I thought it was the legendary Godzilla was technically bigger. I, uh, I this isn't sh no, this shows the legendary. It says he's, uh, I don't. I'm like he's 14, the size of like a skyscraper. God Godzilla, sh uh, Shin is see, it's shown it's the largest according yeah. to this uh chart here. So, but uh, yeah, did I you ever it, watch the, 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 the Godzilla the anime where he's like, a, a, he's literally a planet? It came out. I haven't. It's it's on my list, but I just haven't. You gotta at least it. watch it. There's several movies for it, but oh my god, like the concept of it of him being a planet. It's I'm like, sitting here like I don't know how you may tell a story, but I'm like apparently they did. So eventually I'll get around to actually watching it. Not a good story in my opinion, but I mean, so there are it has its fans, but um. There's so many different iterations of Godzilla. I mean, like there's the you had the, the Hanna Barbera Godzilla back in the, yeah. the late seventies. And the for those watching for that that uh that that Jet Jaguar Godzilla that we were talking about, I I finally I don't know why I didn't do it earlier. I, I put the link in the chat if you want to actually watch it. It's like a thirty second video. And obviously Toho does a bunch of other like smaller stuff. Heck yeah. Uh so in other news. Uh, we got to see a lot more in-depth footage of the new Mad Max uh, movie, Furiosa, uh, which I'm excited about because I thought Fury Road was a 
to me a 10 out of 10 film i thought it was awesome i didn't know what to feel about it but i haven't i didn't watch the first one before this so like i then again i'm not really a wolverts and mad max it feels all. like something that you would so. really like I, f- I feel like you would really like w- definitely watch the first one before you do fury road it, it's a, uh, obviously campy but like it, it's it's a great movie it's just very it's very yeah. good it's a very good movie but fury road was like shockingly good so this looks yeah it like, comes out it comes out next month yeah it looks it uh, looks may, awesome. no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees yeah I, it I, looks I, really I, good I'm, I'm excited for it I, I might i might think about actually actually watching it was it was she in the first one or is it a different character uh she's hold on i it just went to an ad so i actually did not get to see because i haven't finished showing the dude because uh, i guess that's i think it, it like, does have the uh yeah 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 it, it same character same character so and then i had another question because guy i had seen it when i was in in uh, in movies, and I haven't seen this 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 series of incarnation movies from like the very first one that I feel like came out on Eternity ago. Uh, did you have any interest in the uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes coming out? Oh, I'm very because the trailer yeah. seems kind of interested, but I haven't I, watched. I love Planet outside of the, of the Apes. very first movie that that starts this whole saga. I haven't watched any of these Planet of the Apes movies. I think they're great. I think all the 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 new Planet of the Apes, like when they rebooted that series, I I think they were great. Like I thought it told a really good story. From I remember from like the old 60s, 70s movies, the first one was the old, the original was the only good one. The other ones that came out were kind of, kind of bad. Oh, what? From, what I, from what I remember. I'll be honest with you. Like, I watched those with my dad, and I remember liking all of them, and I know he liked all of them. I like uh, the but original. I don't again... remember if, like, what people thought of of all of them. It's been a very long time since I watched them, but I, I liked the. Yeah. I, I like the original I Planet of the Apes too a lot. I don't know the story, and I don't know if it would would work, but it'd be really interesting to like. This all leads up to uh, essentially a retelling of the original movie, where all of a sudden some astronauts come down, but you see it from like the ape point of view type thing. Yeah. I, don't, I, I doubt they would do with this, but I was sitting there as I was watching the trailer. I'm like, what happens all of a sudden if you just take the original concept and it's just like this is leading up to that, except it's a new tell, and all of a sudden you there's actual people that you know can actually speak and it shocks them a whole again like i I don't know Here, here's another article that it doesn't make sense again about this whole as we were talking about star trek this says that that kingdom of the plan of the apes is a reboot of the series but also says it's set generations after the events of 2017's war for the plan well, of the I mean, apes. yeah that, that's not a reboot that... that doesn't make any sense if it's a sequel it's not a reboot Essentially, it's not a reboot. It's just so much time has passed. It that comes off as like you don't have to watch these movies. So much time has passed. You kind of already get what's kind of going on. It's they've got enough time has passed. They're not connected at all. I will say the one thing I'm worried about. I guess you wouldn't have to say it's a worry. It looks so different. Like the CG looks so different than those other movies. Almost, almost looks like to me. It almost looks like a cartoon. Like that, I I don't know if you watch it, but I'm like watching it right now, and it, it almost looks like it's animated. Like the CG this, is this just so Kingdom, yeah, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's it looks, a... I mean, it, it's it's heavy heavy CG for the actual apes, obviously. Like but... they they look animated to me. Like I, I mean, that's essentially what CG is. It's animation more or less. Yeah, but it's not supposed to look <laughs> that way. I don't know. I I think I'm they, looking I think forward they, you know, to it, but to but. I mean, it I looks, guess we'll see ultimately. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not well, saying it looks bad. It, it's just some, something about it. Well, from I haven't seen it, but what I'm understanding is it's supposed to go from they're just really smart apes to like they essentially are essentially like a human and ape, ape yeah. body. Like, yeah. obviously, that's what they're that supposed time, to like, they, they have to develop. So, like, how do you get them to act like that? Well, you have to be fully CG, fully animated. Well, characters. of course, of course. I mean, they're, they're not going to do suits again. Like it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't work. Oh, yeah, the well, suits. Oh, as much as I would Godzilla enjoy that over again, I, I would like it, but I, I feel like probably we're in the minority that most people would. Yeah, so. Hollywood's long past those types of movies, at least on a big budget level. But yeah, I, I'm excited for it though. Uh, man, there was so much at CinemaCon because there's other stuff that that I'm looking at here that just so much. Uh, we also, which was announced a little while ago, we knew about it, but we got some like in depth footage. Uh, the Beetlejuice sequel, and it's called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So it's it's uh, 
trying to like play on itself of of saying the name twice to be the sequel. Uh, but it's been thirty six years since we got the uh, the first movie, so very interesting, very long time. We're getting back the, the cast of characters that was was in the original, uh, Winona Ryder, uh, Catherine D. Diella and Jen, Jenna Ortega, of course, because she's like very popular now. I feel like she's in everything. Um, is going to be in it. So, I, I um loved Beetlejuice as a kid. Introducing unbeatable value for. All but I went back and watched it again, probably like five, six years ago. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I I didn't like it when I rewatched it. Like, I liked it as a kid. And people are probably gonna get mad about this, but I, I thought I didn't think it held up. Um, I was like, man, this is kind of too stupid. Is how I felt Fair rewatching enough. it. Uh, but people people love it. It's got a diehard fan base. Um, it also I don't know if you ever watched it, but it had an, there was an animated series for it too um, that I watched as a kid. So like I was I was pretty into it. But Jenna Ortega is uh she's very popular actress now people love her um and i think it looks pretty cool i'll definitely watch it um yeah i mean it's cool that they're bringing back you know some of the original cast so I, have you ever watched uh beetlejuice i haven't i know about it but it's just a f movie i never really cared for gotcha and then uh i don't know if it was announced but i was looking through some other stuff um uh, Apparently, we're getting an animated Lord of the Rings film in December. The uh, Lord of the Rings War of the Rohirrim. Oh, it's supposed right. to take place behind... It's the story, the untold story behind uh, Helm's Deep. The, mm. I didn't apparently see Apparently, a few hundred years before uh, the actual movie or something like that. Like, I don't know how much it's based on any actual book itself. Yeah, I was going to say... Like, well, how, how where, faithful where, it's actually going to be. Where are we but at here? I don't think... Apparently it's still in post production. Like I didn't, I didn't see a trailer for it, but I just saw like 2024 Lord of the Rings. I was like, I don't remember hearing anything about this. I'll tell you what, I I read the whole thing, Hobbit, read it all multiple times as a kid. I know you did too because I think you actually are kind of the one that put that on to me. Um, I I can't remember, but my my grandma I did bought read me the, the, the Hobbit. The Hobbit. It's the only book that I've actually fully read, and oh, it's read obviously it why I absolutely hate the Hobbit movies. It's, yeah, I hate, I hate him too. Butchers the story. The problem is, it's like a, it's like a quarter the size of like the Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, yet it's a full three movies. Yeah, it makes it's, no sense. And they, they just walk the whole time, and people say that, but like that, they do. And that's I, it needs to be one film, one good film. That's all it needs. Yeah, not not three. The problem is, the book is like wholly from Bilbo's point of view because it's, yeah. it's his story. So like. How do we know what's going on when Bilbo's not there? Like, it's not really kind of relevant. I mean, like, the whole War like, of Five Armies isn't, like, as prevalent as it is in the movie as it is in the book. I feel like we've gotten nothing good from Lord of the Rings since that original trilogy. Like, we got that Gollum yeah. game, and, like, oh, my God, Terrible. look at that disaster. Like, holy crap. Yeah, since, since the original trilogy, and it I feel like we haven't much. gotten anything else Lord of the Rings related that's been good. No, I can't then think again, of anything. If you're, I can't watch the original movies. That okay, aren't the I, that's extended a lot. Cut. We got that the, those two two games, um, Shadow of Mordor and, and uh, War of Mordor. I think, yeah, th like those that. were good. Those were good. I like, but they're their they, own story. They're like unrelated to to anything else. They they created the whole Nemesis system with those games. Like they, I, they, I didn't I didn't care for the Nemesis system. I like I liked it, but I, I, other I guess other than those, um, I can't think of anything. else. Um, yeah, but it's the, it's the original opinion. movies, and it, you're you're doing yourself a disservice if you watch the theatrical release of those movies. You need to watch oh, you the extended to. cut. One hundred percent. It's like what a three hour movie, a three and a half hour movie, then it's a four hour movie. But they they it's they cut out some stuff that's like super vital. Like when you watch the the extended versions, you're like oh, so much stuff makes more sense in these yeah. movies now. Hey, Obviously, there's I a don't... lot cut out from the book and stuff that's changed. But I mean, like it's just like small things. Like it's a minute here, it's two minutes here that just bring the whole story properly together i'm like why was this ever cut in the first place i i, I don't want to be one of those people but i do legitimately feel like like i love those movies the extended cuts mostly the only, the only way but i, I still like point. the books better i i still do well yeah but as far as like that's like that's how you adapt a really dense depth book into a movie and it's kind of the only way you're going to be able to do it and it not be a, a six hour boring dialogue heavy movie like to be fair, like those books 
Uh, if you were to like one for one adapt it, it's gonna be a super long, super boring book. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's there's yeah, chapters yeah. of just talking going on. Did you ever watch the um, the extended cut of Peter Jackson's King Kong? I didn't know. Okay, so it's like I want to say almost five hours long. <laughs> it's like super super long. I'm trying to look up yeah. the exact time. Oh, I think uh, uh, Patrick brought up the the OG animated Hobbit is cool. Yeah, it's probably a better a better movie. I I like the I like the uh, the original animated stuff. That's a really old. It's a really old movie. Uh, very old. Yeah, I I like the and the Hobbit animated uh, stuff. I I like nineteen seventy seven. Jesus, that's going back. Yeah, I was a I was a fan. Um, but yeah, I want to say like the extended cut or something, and that Peter Jackson's King Kong is like super super long like almost five hours or something crazy <laughs> like they added so much that i felt was kind of unneeded because that original all was the like 2000 oh because this is before the uh this is before the uh the monster verse well yeah way yeah way before that um yeah it's like super long i can't remember the exact watch time but like oh because this is much more to like dinosaurs are real it, it's like a callback to the original king kong where they yeah that's what it was meant to like be that. But that movie was short. The original movie was pretty short. It, it wasn't a very long movie at all. <laughs> so they like dragged out this long story for, I can't, I don't know the watch time of the original, but I know it wasn't long. It was a relatively no, short movie. They didn't uh, need to. I mean, the, I mean, then again, it's just the era of when movies were made that like a forty or fifty minute movie was was all you really needed to tell. And like a, what, what wasn't the original like a silent movie technically? No, it wasn't. Or is was it silent. just after that era? Yeah, I thought it because I don't know. It came out in the thirty. I guess yeah. I guess it makes sense. It was a thirties movie. Um, yeah, it would have been just just after kind of that that silent era of movies. But yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, so what else did we get there? I saw that. Uh, uh, this is a little. I mean, this is kind of a little bit related because we're already talking about kaijus and stuff like that apparently the legendary ints uh, live action godzilla series the monarch legacy of monsters is getting a second season so I apple tv announced it. on tuesday uh that the legacy of monsters uh is getting the second season i'm uh, for it i don't know if they gave us an actual uh debut but they just said like hey it's it's getting a second season which is you know a pretty good sign give me just a don't, know, don't know if you had any of the uh thoughts on that as you uh, fix whatever error he's having. <laughs> I guess he's got to up. So uh, I guess we'll dive into it when he gets back. But uh, I still actually need to go back and watch it because I, before I went and watched the Godzilla, I was reading up on it. And I was like, oh, a lot of this in-depth story is coming from this uh, from this Monarch series. So uh, I guess it's a good sign it's getting a second season. A lot of the stuff I'd seen, it wasn't wasn't absolutely terrible compared to a lot of other stuff on Apple TV that I don't actually have. So. Uh, find out, uh, find out a lot of it. Don't hear many people talking about Monarch. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not super big, uh, but when I, I know for me personally, when I dug into like the actual lore of this, uh, this current monster verse going on, a lot of the actual lore and a lot of what ties from what I saw ties a lot of the movies together was this Monarch TV series. Uh, so it's one of those things like I actually want to go and watch because it kind of helps tie a bunch of stuff together, add more lore than what the actual movies give you because you know. You really only care about the monsters fighting. The lore is kind of kind of secondary, and this is definitely a it's lower budget. So you know, monsters like aren't the primary protagonist necessarily, but the characters are, and it's it's not too bad. But I, it's on my list that I I want to see. But obviously, most of the plot points from the actual first season now, I've already been kind of like spoiled on because because YouTube and me just trying to like learn stuff. Now, yeah, Apple isn't promoting it. It's it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how popular Apple TV is. I don't I don't have. Then again, I got rid of Hulu and Netflix because I just saw it's like a waste of money. But I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. I, I can watch you. You can watch it without you know the whole high seas type thing. It's not that's not ideal. But yeah. Uh, and then kind of related to that, obviously we can kind of talk about this. But Brandon's gone. King Kong, uh, the new Empire. Godzilla Kong still remains the top of the box office in its second weekend. Uh, nice. And obviously not to dig too much into this, it has, a, as of right now, it has earned $361 million worldwide in two weeks. 
That's crazy. It's a significant amount of money. That's that's awesome. I hey, I want to see it do well because I want to keep getting. Yeah, and the movies. fact it's, uh, and then it's it's second weekend. It was still still the top earner the second week. I think we're going into the third week, and so we'll see if it's it gets dethroned this week or not. Heck yeah, I I saw um. So, I mean, there was a lot at that CinemaCon. I feel like more news coming out of that than, like, almost anything this year. We, I mean, of course, you got there's other video game news as well, but uh, there's definitely more to touch on. So, this was rumored quite some time ago, but um, do you know about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, The Last Ronin? Have you heard about that? Whole I don't know anything about it. Okay, so basically the concept is there's one turtle left alive, and that that the one turtle is, is fighting the, the foot clan and, and everything like that. All the, the three, three is turtles a, are dead. It, one's alive. It, is it Donatello or do we not know? We, we know if we read, if you read it, but I, I don't really want to spoil who it is, but no, it, fair we, are, enough, fair we, enough. we are getting a movie for that, which is crazy. Cause I feel like, um, I, I, people don't know and they don't realize cause they just think of the eighties cartoon, but turtles yeah. started out as an adult, brutal brutal series all the turtles crazy. were yeah so originally it was black oh, and white and they were like you know violent and and killed people and like it was they were brutal it was not and it was specifically for adults it was not a kid series yeah because you think of uh like og at least to me i think of old, the old school uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, it's the old like what the 80s 90s cartoon mm-hmm. and then the the old 90s movies which as cheesy as they are, I liked all three of those those old live action. I like one and two movies. I hated, absolutely hate three. I despise that. I didn't movie. hate three. I'm I think sorry. So I bad. liked it. Horrible. It's the worst of the three, but, but I still enjoyed but it. But yeah, you think of that. It's funny because they used to do this, right? They used to do this, but they take something that is like super violent and crazy, right? Like because that's what Turtles was, yeah. and then they turned it into this cheesy 80s show that i love it's i'm very nostalgic yeah. for it well they have uh, to like the turtles that eat pizza. A child well that's the thing right like so they can sell merchandise and stuff why like they did that but do you know that they made a rambo toy line and cartoon series they took a rated oh, r movie that. rated r movie and turned it into a cartoon for kids they did that's that like a lot the 80s as a whole yeah pretty much but uh no this 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 is like a callback to that it's very violent. It's crazy. It's not what you expect. So uh, th- most people don't even know about like ha- the origins of the Ninja Turtles and like and they all wore the same color mask. They didn't have different masks. That was a a different thing. So uh, I'm interested in that. Uh, it looks like we're also getting the newest installment of the Scary Movie franchise. <laughs> uh, that's oh, those I'm are those personally are personally not OG a fan. Movies. Personally, no, oh, I didn't like any of them. Those are so funny and so like iconic at this. I point. don't like that type the of comedy. classic scary movie. I I don't. I it's, there's a couple like scenes that are pretty classic and funny, but I don't like those. I don't like parody movies. I'm not a fan of any. I, I parody loved. Movies. I love the OG scary movie I, I think they get worse as they go on but like the the first two are like probably like the best especially they're not the it's just yeah the original like, was very I, iconic it's iconic and it's like peak what you think of like parody movie like it, it just does it it does a parody perfectly because yeah. it, it riffs on all the the crap because most horror movies are, are terrible like let's be honest they're really cheesy poorly written where the where the your main character they just do stupid things but then again, you see what happens in real life. You're kind of like, I, yeah, I could probably see somebody just being that stupid in real life. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about them bringing this back, if I'm being honest with you. Cause, uh, but it's so iconic. Like, I don't know how you could redo it and not just butcher it at the same time. I, yeah, I, I'm not sure about this one. Um, they did announce, they, I, this is going to be a theme here because there's, there's more to talk about, but they're remaking The Running Man. Uh, I have I have heard about that. Yeah, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Um, they're remaking that. <laughs> of course, they are. Uh, that's what Hollywood do, does best. They remake everything. But um, I okay. <laughs> I guess like well, all um, right. They're also remaking the Naked Gun, which are iconic movies, and I feel like they should the not be doing that. I, I, who who who's a better actor than Leslie Nelson? Starring like comedy. Starring Liam Neeson. The Naked Gun is. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know how it's gonna work. That doesn't he's make sense. He's not even the same actor. Like no, I. No, he's like he, a very he, serious actor. He's and... not a comedic actor. 
the naked like gun you, is a very very comedic kind of pulls on a lot of those um yeah i just don't know how he's gonna do it i, I don't the know the whole naked gun the whole snakes on planes movies yeah, like that's yeah like, it, it's like a parody of those um those type of movies from that time oh uh, well uh, it, uh, unfortunately you can't bring back oj simpson to to restart his role in those movies yeah, I was gonna bring that up quickly. <laughs> I was about to bring that up. I was up. like, hey, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a segue. He was in the movies. Yeah, uh, yeah. OJ Simpson was in the movies, and he, uh, he did, um, he did pass. Uh, his family put out a Twitter statement, and I was like, oh my god. You should have seen the comments. You, sh- they turned uh, the, the comments I, I, off. They turned them off. I saw memes more than anything else that that popped up. I'm like, oh, the internet's just brutal on this guy. I made a post about it. Um. I forget what quote I took from the, the trial or whatever, but I saw. It doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're gonna ruin it. The, yeah, they're gonna ruin it. Um, ah, uh, I don't know. I, that's weird. I feel like that's a really Maybe. weird actor choice. Like that, that to me, that doesn't fit because I've never. Se- Maybe he has done something I've never seen, but he's like a very serious toned actor that he's always like kind of playing himself in every movie. Yeah, but. And I had to pull up some of his old movies, but I think Leslie Nielsen's always been known as like a goofy comedic yeah, guy. Yeah, always, like never, always. From some of his old stuff, like I don't know everything, but it it has like this this goofy uh, the, the the goofy feel to most stuff he's done because he's what known for the Naked Gun and Airplane. Like, like that's yeah, his, those are his, those are like his most well known. But stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of other there's a lot of other stuff. But yeah, those are I would say some of the top. Um, yeah, it's what whatever. I I don't know. I, I'm tired of remakes. Um. We did get, I don't know the name of it, because this doesn't say, and I didn't see the footage, but we're getting a musical, a new musical from South Park creators, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, with music from Kendrick Lamar. So, of course, they did They did that, um, what's that musical called that they did? Oh, uh, The Book of Mormon? Yeah, The Book of Mormon. Well, that was more of like a, a Broadway than anything else, but it, it's a musical, essentially. I don't know how they're, I don't know what the, what they're, what, what kind of theme they're targeting, though. Yeah, I, I know the Book of Mormon was like well, well received from like literally everybody. Yeah, I I've never seen it, but I, people seem to love it. I don't know. Want to type in? It says Broadway musical. I the same thing, right? Broadway musical, same thing. Well, that's uh, all. All they're all musicals. I'm pretty sure. Well, I I'm curious to see what the the new one is, but it, it looks like a few articles are just stating that Kendrick Lamar has some something to do with it. Uh. And there's no name. Uh, it just looks like it's going to be under their company, PG Lang. Uh, I'm excited to announce that we're going into production this summer on a musical. And yeah, it just says from the creators of South Park. So I, mean, I guess I, I guess don't we'll like see. musicals. I mean, but I mean, you know, Matt Parker and Trace don't have a really good track record. They, yeah. they usually don't put out put out garbage for the most part. That yeah. I, that, so I, I mean, I guess I guess we'll see. But I, then again. I probably if it's a music, I'll, I'm probably not going to watch it because I just don't like musicals. Yeah, I don't either. I, I actually kind of I, I, I can't I kinda stand have a them. for that genre. I, I I can't stand them personally. I was trying to think. Like, there's only one musical that I've actually watched and I've actually liked, and that's The Sound of Music. It's probably the only musical that I could say that I've actually. Didn't yeah, I like I like just the by Sound of Music. Yep. But uh, that's just a well done movie. Uh, at this point, it's kind of like iconic. It's a, uh, Mr. Coffee said. Shredder died in the first couple of issues of the original Turtle series. Uh, he uh, he really got uh, shredded. Didn't yeah. He? <laughs> uh, Patrick but, uh, said, no, don't ruin the classic Naked Gun. Uh, Police Squad TV show from the 80s was super funny. Uh, Mr. Coffee said, not really go back to old, old movies. He was well known as a serious actor. And so Trey Parker... Matt did release a musical called Cannibal Holocaust. It was not good. I didn't know they did a musical for Cannibal Holocaust. That's a had to iconic, been like a really old I, I'll, movie. Iconic uh, horror movie that was. I like think I know what he's, what he's talking about. I yeah, didn't, I didn't know they did a musical for it. Yeah, it was. It was like a. It was a movie where uh, they portrayed that the people were actually there was real footage of people and animals dying in it. Um, it, it's got like a whole backstory, uh, but like for years, like people were debating, um, and they were saying that the, these people in the movie and the animals are are really dying, like they're really getting killed. Uh, so, but it's I possible it came out in nineteen eighty. So, 
it it's been since debunked, but for years that was like the whole thing of it. It was like banned. It was banned everywhere. Like you couldn't get the movie for years and years. I mean, um, yeah. To be fair, it, it sounds like like Matt Matt Stone and Trey Parker some sort of crap they'd pull just to to get free advertising for it. Sounds like it, but. Uh, uh, there was a. I know this is less. It's not movie related, but um, apparently the P Cube. Uh, I don't know uh, studio. I can't properly pronounce. Apparently on Tuesday they they said uh, on April twenty sixth that we're getting the Class of Heroes one and two complete edition remaster coming out. Oh, really? It's for the PS five, Switch, and Steam. No way. Okay. All right. I'm down for it's it. The old. Uh, it's an old JRPG. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I, or I'm, it's a DRPG, I guess. Yeah, I, I play. It. I played it on the the PSP, um, the first game. So, all right, I'm down for it. I it's never played older, the second uh, second game. Japanese but, games. Yeah, it's like a a dungeon crawling type game. Yeah, that's it, what I heard. Yeah, it, I, I liked it. I, I, so, have you ever played the Etri and Odyssey games? haven't no it's very much like that very much uh look up etrian odyssey because it's like anime sort of based the characters but like yeah. it's it's like a it's like a classic first person like dungeon crawler so it's yeah. you gotta either give the genre a try or already really like it but like i dug it I, i'm a fan uh but i never played the second class of heroes too i don't even know if we got it here I guess it's uh, it's a whole collection. They just said, "Hey, it's coming out in like a month and a half," and it's I mean forty dollars for I'll, for two yeah, games. Yeah, that's a good remake. deal. I'll, I'll, I assume it's a it's a decent deal. At least that's the price for the yeah, Nintendo Switch version. Oh, jeez, I'm looking at the uh, the cost of the second one on eBay. Holy crap, two hundred and nine dollars open copy. Jeez. Or you can just get the uh, the the remastered for forty bucks and get both games. One hundred and sixty eight. Uh, and then here's one graded for eight hundred and fifty dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a good deal as of right now. It's for the physical edition on Switch. It's forty dollars, so I assume it's probably forty dollars across the board. Well, that's gonna be a good way for people. I'm all for them bringing out games that are super expensive, and there's no way for people to play except play illegally. Um, Undercut the 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 market a little bit. But I'm sure it sure it'll it'll force those prices. To I did drop. didn't know there's actually a third game. Uh, that's on the PS3. So interesting that they didn't add that in there. Uh, yeah, I don't, there, I don't know anything about the story or something like that. And there's a Class of Heroes 2G, which I assume probably is then like again, an online. Or, I don't know how much of those 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 games like if that if it's a G, it's like a spinoff. Like how much they would actually put in this collection. Yeah. Yeah, I I imagine they, they add do. whatever additional content is in that G version. I I can't assume I mean, that there's, they there's the, withdraw the. I mean, there's there's a possibility it's not there at all, but I mean, it's not like it's a super well known uh, game series. Well, this will give a this is a chance for people to check it out because I really like the first game. Again, I never played anything else beyond the first one, uh, but it, yeah. Class Fears Two did come out here, and it's very expensive. So I'm all for this. That's that's some good news. Uh, we also got. Um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem sequel was announced. Uh, there's also a new game coming out. Two new games, technically. Uh, they're both up for pre-order, but they're bringing the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game um, from the 2010 series that was kind of stuck, uh, stuck in the arcade and stuck on like console, like Xbox Live Arcade, I believe. So that's yeah. coming out for forty bucks. And like that's up uh, on Amazon now, and then there's another one I found out about. We we got the announcement for the the new movie, but there's also um, it's called Mute Mutant Unleashed is another new game that we're getting, and it when I just saw it go up for pre order today. There's like a big collector's edition for it and and everything, uh, that like includes the van. It's like pretty cool. Um, that collector's edition they they said is a GameStop exclusive. Uh, and it looks like one of the best collector's editions I've seen in a while for a game. It, it looks really cool. You get the van and, like, a big box set and a bunch of, like, cool-looking goodies that don't just look like garbage. Uh, but, yeah, so yeah. we got a new game announcement and um, officially announced uh, the next animated movie. Uh, we also got... <laughs> oh, boy. We got 
Aang, the last airbender, um, more of the stuff shown there as well. So if you're interested in seeing about this next, oh man, I, I am not happy <laughs> about them trying this again. I, it could be good. Like, honestly, the series should not be hard to do live action, I feel like. Um, but boy, did that movie leave a, a sour taste in my mouth. I, that that last movie, man. Oh, yeah. It was just, it was it was the same level as the Dragon Ball Evolution movie. Like it was they oh, were no worse. Dragon Ball Evolution is ten times. At least that attempted to to follow the orig- its source material. Uh, Dragon Ball they're, they're both didn't bad. Follow at all. I'm not. There there's a there's a special place in hell for whoever made Dragon Ball Evolution. I will say we got a really good fighting game on the PSP out of it though. <laughs> like so. Like you got to look up the gameplay. It's like surprisingly, shockingly good. Um, but yeah, I, I, I I'm gonna watch it. Obviously, I love, uh, I love Avatar. Um, hopefully, th- this is good. But uh, I mean, it's animated. This this one's animated. Um, well, I mean, if you're like, interested, stu- in- studio confirmed plans for two more films as well. So. I mean, I guess we'll see. Yeah. It'd do better. But, I mean, speaking of animated films, apparently now we're now getting... Uh, we just got our the second teaser trailer for the third My Hero Academia film oh, okay. called uh, Your Next, uh, which apparently has to deal with a evil version. Like, the villain's supposed to be like an evil version of... Uh, uh, I can't think of my... Uh, I haven't watched it, so I know oh, it's my. one it's that I want to wanna watch. I I paused for a second. It's supposed to be like an evil version of of All Might. I blanked on the name. Haven't uh, like actually watched One Piece in a while. One Piece, not one. My <laughs> my Hero Academia. I'm all over the place right now. I had I don't really think about his his name for a second. Can I? Can I made my mush? And it's mm. supposed to be like the biggest and dark. At least as far as like the other two movies, like their scale it's supposed to be like the biggest scale of these three movies by far and stuff like that are the other uh, movies i'm pretty good? sure it's i thought they were obviously they're not in canada the actual story but i thought they were entertaining as when they came out and stuff like that the scale they it kind of matched where the 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 story in the anime was when the movie came out but i thought they were they were entertaining enough for like an anime movie i always find it weird that like nine times out of ten anime movies are never canon because <laughs> uh, it's a, it's like its own story because it has to it for those that don't know, to be canon to like an anime, it has to be like based on the actual manga, the source material. If it's not based on the source material, it's not canon, or it would be like canon to the anime only. I mean, you could make it canon to the anime only because anime never follows beat for beat with the manga. It's Look, at like the, Look at Yu Gi Oh! Look at Yu Gi Oh! It's <laughs> yeah, and you get that up. not usually not to that degree, but it's pretty much saying that the. Uh, all of Disney's MCU is not canon because it's not based on any of the actual comic books. It's not a one-for-one adaptation, or it's not a very yeah, close see, yeah, it's like, adaptation. It's yeah. a completely different story. It's not canon to the. It's not canon because like this that isn't original canon source, to the anime either, right? You're saying yeah. Whether it's not a no, it's just a. It's just its own. It's just a movie they do to to hype up. But it's like if it's not based on like the manga or the light novel that this the source material, then it's not considered like canon to the source material. But I think that's like a that's an anime specific thing. Interesting. Well, have you seen the game Zenless Zone Zero? Have you seen this one? I this is something that I, I just just learned about. No, I, oh, it's from Hoyoverse, so no, I don't. Yeah, it it's uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like my type of game. Uh, it's a free to play game. So. Yeah, it's a. It, I saw it's like it's on it's on Windows and PS5, but it's Android, iOS. It's it's a it's a HoYoVerse game. It's a uh, it's a gotcha game. Essentially, is what it, what it looks like. I wasn't that's sure all, if it, all HoYoVerse does. Was something you'd be interested in? But I saw that and I was like, uh, no. no for me. It, it, well, I saw it was from HoYoVerse. I'm like, oh, it's a it's a gotcha. I I I hate gotcha games personally. I, I have no so. interest. I think it's the epitome <laughs> of of gambling, but that's like a personal opinion. Well, not, every, not everyone feels the same way. Plus, it's a Chinese game, and I don't like the CCP. So, have you heard of um, Enter the Garden, The Waiting Man? Uh, they showed a trailer. It's a three-part anthology anime uh, from Azuki, and 
Dentsu with creative producer. Is- uh, it's called Enter the Garden. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a three. The- by Azuki. Enter the Garden. Yeah. It's called Enter the Garden, The Waiting Man, the first first part. This is going to be a three-part anthology uh, anime. Um, I've seen a few of those. Yeah, before. and it's from Azuki, who, I mean, has done quite a bit of stuff. Uh, and, I mean, the, the, the trailer that I saw, they dropped two hours ago, that's on IG. It doesn't really show a whole lot. It doesn't show much. No, that's what I'm. I'm also looking at. Um, but I mean, if it gets a it gets a U.S. release in theaters, I'll I'll definitely go see it. Yeah, I mean, Code Geass. Like I, I liked Code Geass a lot. So uh, if it's anything like that, I, I'm down. That's kind of underrated. I feel like nobody talks about that one. I, I don't. It's not the hot new thing anymore. It, it was big when we were when we were younger, just because it was like the hot new series, kind of like. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist used to be like the hot thing, and then you know this other stuff comes out, and we get more stuff that come over. I mean, talk about a series that I think was like super overhyped. Kogias? I didn't know Full Metal Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh. I thought was way overhyped. I liked it. You didn't? Did you? I didn't not I, like I, it. I or liked did? it. I just thought it was way overhyped in the community. That like this is like the best thing ever. Like it's not even close. There's like ten other you know, shows that I, that I've watched at the time that I thought were better, but. I think it's personal opinion, but then if that's anything that gets overly hyped up, I just start to get like a sour taste in my mouth on it. Yeah, have you uh, seen the Soul Slinger Envoy of Death uh, early access trailer? It's a Wild Wild West uh, themed roguelite FPS. Uh, it's currently. I have heard of it, but I mean, I don't. Yeah, I this didn't is, know what to think about it. This is new it, it to just me. Seems like, it seemed kind of generic to like a like a destiny not yeah like a destiny ripoff. Uh, I think that's the first thing I thought about it. Yeah, I'm not a destiny fan personally, so I like the first game. Destiny two was um I didn't like where this, the the story and then the the constant updates and the the cost and stuff like I didn't I didn't like it like the first one. Well, it looks like and that, that's kind of what it comes off as kind of like a as another destiny ripoff. So I don't know if it'll actually do well, but then again, Destiny two's kind of crap so maybe it has a chance well it's free to play and it looks like it's going to be in steam's fps fest starting uh the 15th through the 22nd so you'll be able to play it there yeah uh, so it's going to be access. riddled with microtransactions well it's, free it's to play. Free, 100 so like pretty much count count me out of of, of that one there i'm i'm maybe i don't play free i'll games. try it but like i I I don't know. Like I, it's just not. A lot my of free to play games are like pay to win type type games. Yeah, very much. Turn into. It's it's like I just can't get into any of that. So Overwatch, uh, any anything is free to play. That and I didn't have any money. I would just play it and grind it out. But now I'm just sitting here. I'm like I don't have any interest in this. Especially like if it's if you can potentially pay to like get better better gear or something like that. Yeah, I don't like that. I've never, never uh, liked any of that at all. Uh, yeah. I know uh, Mr. Coffee was saying put like 400 hours into Destiny for each console. I never came close to it, but I just played the first Destiny. I actually played Destiny 2 first, but I played. I went back and played the first one for the story, but uh, I don't know. I just didn't like what they were doing with Destiny 2. Yeah, I, I, pl- I played. I played both, and I... I... I thought Destiny I, 1 was still better going I'm, back when I, I replayed maybe, them. I preferred it. Maybe 40 hours in Destiny 1, so I put a little time into it, but the, the time people put into those games, like I didn't maybe even touch. Between PS4 and PC, I may have put 100 hours into Destiny 2 and maybe 20 hours into Destiny 1, uh, but I, it, it's just not the I feel like not, 40 not hours is still a, a good chunk of time to be able to say whether you like the game or not. I just, I personally, like, I played with friends, that was like the only well, like catch of me Des- playing, but when I played Destiny Two, it's because I played with a bunch of other friends. But then we stopped playing it, went back to to Rainbow Six Siege at the time, and that's when I like pretty much stopped playing it. Yeah, well, you gotta have friends to, to play, that, play games like those. Yeah, they're not they're not single player games. Yeah, I yeah. Or it's so. it's more funner if you're. It's far more more entertaining, fun to play if uh, if you're playing with other people. If you're playing by yourself, it's just not as it's not the same. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so we did get a new um, 
a poster, uh, like promo today on Knuckles, which comes out at the end of the month. But we also got the first actual footage for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and at CinemaCon, and it revealed Shadow and a down-on-his-luck Dr. Robotnik, and Shadow looks really good. I, like, I'm super pumped. Like, it looks like they're doing... I mean, it's just the first look, but it looks like they're going to be doing the, the character justice. Um, I'm super... Yeah, that's definitely good. I'm super pumped. Um, no, yeah, like I said, Knuckles comes out at the end of the month, so I'll be watching that, and then we get the official announcement of this. So, um, yeah. It, and obviously, uh, Jim Carrey is returning as Dr. Robotnik, even though he said he was retiring after Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So it looks like he is revising. So he can't be role. trusted. Yeah. They just threw enough money at him. He's like, all right, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure that that was it. Like, hey, we need you to yeah. complete this little saga here. I did um, want to say, speaking of movies, like if you were interested in, in decent anime movies, because uh, this is made by the same guy who did uh, I'm not. Weathering With You and... Uh, uh, Maybe I'm like God. I don't know the name. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm just blanking on the name. But uh, it just finally came out. Like, if you're interested in uh, the movie Suzume, have you heard about it at all? Mm-mm, I haven't heard of that. But it just came out, and then obviously, it came out in a collector's edition. I got it. I don't. I already took out the actual DVD. It kind of came with. I thought it was interesting. I didn't see a lot in movies anymore. It came with some like little uh, some oh, little nice. art from the actual movie and then it actually gives you a because uh, it's not much more for just the blue like an actual like an art book for the whole movie and stuff it's like that I thought cool. that was pretty I like pretty when dope. they do like, that stuff it's an extra 10 20 dollars on just the actual hard blu-ray for it uh nice. but uh finally came in I haven't I, I think I originally watched it several like about a year ago it took like a year to actually get an actual physical release uh, but it's an interesting kind of kind of movie uh because the uh uh, the same dude who did a weathering with you and then the other really well-known movie. And I'm just, I'm blanking on, on everything right now. I, I, I have been to tonight. <laughs> I couldn't think of Jet Jaguar's name and all that uh, stuff. God, it's killing me. I'm trying to think of the, uh, what is the direct? Uh, oh, M- M- Makoto Shinkai. Cause he also did, and it's your name. What he's really well known for. Uh, I can't believe I blanked on that name. Because this one that he did, that it just came out, uh, had to deal with kind of like a, it's like a weird romance type movie where uh, this dude is trying to like save the world from like some existential threat that you obviously can't th- see. But this otherworldly threat causes like natural disasters in our world. So he's trying to save it. But then he gets cursed, turns into a, essentially a chair. And then trying to go across Japan to kind of like, you know, save the world type stuff. And then, that's the if you weren't aware like a few years ago the whole meme between uh, a girl who kind of fell in love with a chair type thing, what? which is a really interesting thing. But I mean, it makes more sense if you actually watch the movie. But it was a, it was an interesting movie because uh, it deals with you know you know overcoming like loss in the past. Because the main character she she lost her parents when she was like really young and stuff like that. And so it it addresses like loss and natural disasters and stuff like that. Uh, but I thought it was a really really interesting interesting you know anime movie and stuff like that. If you were ever interested in such a movie, interesting, yeah, I. But it just it just came out like a few weeks ago on uh, on Blu-ray here in the here in the U.S. So nice. How much was it? Uh, I gotta pull up exactly. I think I I think it was. I just want to make sure I pulled the actual. Uh, so I bought it off Amazon. I want to pull up the price. So it, it cost me. I bought the. Uh, Movie limited edition Blu-ray plus DVD uh, was uh, sixty-five dollars for that exact version that I had. I think it's significantly cheaper if you buy just the movie itself, not the extra uh, extra stuff that came with it. Yeah, so the 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 that box with the with the art folders and the actual art book is sixty-five dollars, and apparently as of right now on Amazon that that we're recording this, uh, it is uh, twenty-eight ninety-nine. For just the actual movie itself on Amazon, oh, for I real? think it was originally I think it was originally priced at like thirty five dollars for just the Blu ray DVD. But I was like, I I get the whole thing. Like I I watched it in theaters. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So like I'll I'll get the extra art book for you know an extra thirty bucks or something. 
Huh. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm 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 digging. But uh, Makoto Shinka, he's in a lot of good movies. Uh, another really one that he's well known for is the five centimeters per second, which I didn't really like personally. But it's a, it's a well known if you're super in the whole anime scene. Uh, and he also worked on some other stuff that people might know, like the Voice of Distant Stars, which was like a like a short film. Uh, a place promised in our early days. Children. Uh, who chase lost voices. He's just done a really, a, a lot of well-known movies, some short, some like full length type stuff. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. I, might I don't know if we had to let's check out, I don't know if we addressed it before, but he was apparently the director for the opening for, uh, uh, wise Two eternal game. And then the legend of heroes three song of the ocean. He did the opening for both those two games. Oh, legend. It's like of a heroes. small little, yeah, small little small little thing for for some some game related stuff that he did. That's pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't uh haven't heard of that one. Have you seen um the trailer for Slave Zero X? I haven't. So it looks like a pretty cool retro style game. Uh, it was one that I'd been eyeballing the last few days. Immediately, and... there's like a like a demon looking thing on the box card. I'm like, oh, it's probably a good game. Yeah, it, it, to me it looks it looks really cool. It's gonna be on Steam and and uh, other platforms. Is but... this a uh, it's supposed to be like a remake of the original? It's just like the old original game just brought to I, modern consoles. I think that it's supposed to be like a remake, but I could be wrong. I don't know. It it may just be a new entry. Um, I I legitimately don't know that part. Um, but it it's really interesting really as good. I was looking. I just pulled up real quickly. Looks in the old because apparently, I guess. Well, I guess I has to. The the Slave Zero. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a remake. Came out came out in ninety nine. It was that whole two point five D where it's like a a sprite on like a semi three D world background. Really really interesting art style. But yeah, like, very that very. Turn of the century three D was a really unique era. I I love that. Uh, I love the two point. I mean, they still do that a lot. And Nintendo does it all the time. Like the super. Or not super. Yeah. The new Princess Peach game, you know, is two. But it's not the same game. as the. Obviously, it's not it looks the a lot same with the old school games. Yeah, because these the have graphics, you know, like polygon graphics in the back, sprites, you know, like actual sprite work. So it's it is very different and but, really bland polygon backgrounds, but enough for it to have that 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 three D feel and stuff like that. Well, I'm I looking really at miss, some of the like, images and the some of the backgrounds look really really good to me, like really good. I love that. I really um, miss like true sprite artwork sometimes. I do, in all the games. time, man. Like I think about that with Pokemon. Even I'm like, man, I miss. I, I some of that stuff was really well done. Very really well. well. Done. Like you have, you have more pixels. You can make a really better sprite artwork now. I I agree. I mean, a lot of indie companies are doing just that, which I I appreciate because I you know and I, you can save money and make a really entertaining game as well. Exactly. Yeah, this looks really good to me. So th I, this is gonna fly under the radar for a lot of people, but hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, this does well. I, I mean, does it, it look like something you would play? Yeah, it's possible. Like I was looking at the actual for this new X game. It looks almost like the same art style from the original game that came out. From what I saw, yeah, like a quick little footage. It's just you know, a little bit better graphics. Yeah, and the whole three D is not as polygon two thousand ish. Uh, uh, graphics that they had to what they had to work with back then yeah i actually um so there is a there's a dreamcast game for this and it's a third person shooter so they, they like they've done some different stuff with the franchise which was also yeah. supposed to be a remake um so like this has had a few different you know different iterations and, and styles and stuff like that uh, i'm looking here there's one i didn't even know about um called slave zero city uh, and it looks like it was a PC game, also a third-person shooter. So, uh, interesting that they're you know revitalizing a series that hasn't gotten uh you know haven't been dormant like, for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I'm ex I I I'm definitely gonna play this for sure, one hundred percent. Uh, I think it looks cool. So that's okay. That's so you can obviously apparently get the original Slave Zero on Steam for seven dollars. The, the, like the, original the original or the the one from ninety nine. Oh, okay. I, I wonder if the I, I doubt I doubt that the uh, Slave Zero remake, the third person shooter one, is on Steam. But that that'd be cool because it was a Dreamcast game. 
That'd be interesting if it, if it were. Yeah, it only looks like uh, Slave Zero and Slave Zero X are going to be on Steam. Because hmm. it's, it's got the Slave Zero X at $25 on Steam. 30 bucks if you get like the Collector's or Ultimate Edition or whatever it is. Interesting. Yeah, I, j I thought this would be a cool one to point out. Because like, it yeah. seems like not it's a lot very... of coverage on it, but... As far as the uh, as far as Steam reviews goes, all time for with 147, it's got very positive uh, reviews. So, I I love these I style mean, people, of games. People like it. Yeah, I, I yeah I love these style of games. So I'm I'm pretty pretty excited. Uh, I did want to I briefly touched on it um, when I was doing the intro segment, but basically uh, somebody turned Breath of the Wild into 4K. On the, the the Nintendo Switch, there is YouTube footage that you can watch of him doing this, the process. But all he did was upgrade the RAM and the Switch. And, like, he showed the process of, okay, we got it running at 4K natively on the Switch, but there's, like, no frames per second. So then he does it yeah. at 2K, and it's got he's got it, like, a solid 30. And so, like, it's very playable. I mean, it's at what, you know... It, it, it was very playable once he showed that. It was like a little above 2K, whatever the resolution was. And uh, I thought it was really, really interesting because that could give us a little snapshot into what... I mean, if you can do that on the Switch 1 and make it run 4K by just upgrading the RAM, like, that, that shows the possibility for the, the Switch 2. I think the Switch 2 will surely be able to run 4k 60 um i think it should be a, a, a pretty capable device pretty comparable yeah to the other devices out there i think it has to be in, in my opinion but if somebody can do that with the original switch like it it opens up a door of possibilities for the switch too yeah by just upgrading the ram and that's it like that's pretty crazy um uh, it was interesting. He's got a few videos on it, but uh, it yeah, it kind of points out that hey, like this is this is possible. Like we we can do this. So I I've got high hopes that, that the switch is uh on par, if not a little better than the other handheld devices out there at the very least. I think it kind of has to be. I mean, with the with the handheld competition, I think it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be there. I mean, and it's obviously it possible. To. You're seeing all these other companies do it, so I thought that we know that was a lot of speculation. Yeah, awesome. uh, I don't know if you. I don't know if this is based on a game or an actual anime. You ever hear of a sh of a of a of a show called Durarara? Yes. Yeah. 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 I have. So apparently, uh, the author hints at the light novel's return apparently after an eight year hiatus. That's cool. I was like, that's I haven't heard about that in forever. I'm like, oh, eight years? Like, that's a long time to be like, yeah, I'm just not going to write anymore. Like, to have, like, a series you like and it just be for, like, a, a decade plus with, like, nothing. I mean... I mean you kind of deal with it in the in the gaming industry, like, all the time, but... Yeah. Yeah, you do. Uh, have you heard of Final Factory? New game going familiar. into early access... Uh, it definitely is not my type of game, for sure. Uh, but it, it says it, 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 got, it got a 70 score here on game8.co. I've, I've never been on this website, but Final Factory is a, take Final on like a... a Space Age factory management simulator from Never Games, limited where you build massive factories in the cold and hostile vastness of space. I pulled something up and I didn't realize the audio was on it. It just scared me. It was super loud. I, I keep doing that. I got that, super startled. And I can't have the daggone audio. I got to figure out how to not have audio pop up because they hear that too. It's like uh, yeah. aggravating. Oof. But yeah, it doesn't look like my type of game, but I figured I'd yeah. bring it up because it's going, going into early access. And it's only, looks like twenty three ninety nine. Um you buy it so it's like a cheap game um, yeah you know how everything kind of gets remakes and remasters all the time it's like let's do a reimagining of a series mm -hmm. so apparently for the 25th anniversary <laughs> of cowboy bebop uh the uh creator uh koichi uh 
Yamadera was was asked about like a like a spinoff or a continuation, and he pretty much came out and says like I don't think we should do it. Pretty much immediately Good just shot him. down like Good on him. any like like we did a show, we did a series, or even like a game. We did what we wanted to do. Like we don't need to continue to to expand. It. Like the story was told. Like let's just leave it alone. You already like, tried the live action. You, you already tried the live action. Let's not do it. Pretty much. No, nah, that's good I mean, it's, for it's him. like it's like a small it's a small thing, but like the whole the whole concept of sometimes like a movie or like a game or something like that, like it's good the way it is. We don't need any more. Like one of the games that I think of is like the uh like the Gears of War, like the first three games. Mm -hmm. Like they made a game, they told their story, that was it. The problem they want to keep making more and it just kinda of gets worse and well, worse. Well they're definitely I mean, we know a new one's in development, and like that's one of the top Microsoft series. Like, I feel like they kinda of have to, right? I don't have it's to. It's Halo like, and you, Gears you made, of War. What else is there? You've made your game. You've told your story. Go on to a new IP. Like, you can port them, but, like, do something new. Because sometimes you don't leave well enough alone, and you just keep milking something until you just suck the life out of it. I, I agree that 1 through 3 are, are It's the, the same best, thing with Halo. And, and yeah, three, it's four, the same three, with Halo. And, and, uh, and uh, kind of what, what it went around. You told your original story. That's great. You don't always need that flagship. Move on to something new. I think it's it's like, kind of hard for Microsoft why though because like what else? the same thing. They they the problem they is they keep pumping out Halo games and people just keep yeah shooting it down. They're like this is a bad game. Like just stop. I didn't I didn't like hate Gears of War four. Um, I didn't think it was yeah, great, I but it. I didn't I didn't I, I didn't even finish it. The one I thought I was I bad like was it. Judgment. I didn't like Judgment. So. But it also, it was, yeah, it was kind of bad. It was. I didn't. Like I think that in the one. in the in the in the aftermath of three, it wasn't. It, it was shot down. It was a much shorter game. I didn't hate it as much, but it's definitely a step back, and it definitely was a foreshadowing of what was to come in the Gears of War. Yeah, franchise. I, I think I liked the Gears of War DLC, like all the stuff that came after, more than I did the base game. Like there was a ton of other content that came out after story wise, game. and like, I thought the first it was better. Three, the first three games told their story and they then it did. was done. But this I is thought, you know, this is the name of the it. game. I mean, they're, look at all the movies they're rebooting that make no sense. <laughs> well, this I, is what they I, do. What I there was something I didn't think about where like Disney, like, hey, let's redo a movie and just butcher it. For, I saw somebody bring it up like they well, they, they remake that movie because they need to uh, uh, redo their like their trademark on the IP so they don't lose it and it go into the public domain. That's they why just, they do that with some of these movies. They can just renew it. They could just renew it. I don't think you but have it, to put something out, right? It has it has an expiration date. I mean like well, you look can't at, keep it forever. Look at Mickey Mouse. Now we're getting a Mickey Mouse inspired basically straight up first well, first person shooter. Mickey well, the old Mickey Mouse is now in the public domain. Enough time has passed where it's, it's have you seen like that? A, have you watched gameplay of that? That Mickey Mouse for oh my god, dude, you have to. There's like blood every it's black and white and there's like blood. What, what's it called again? I don't remember. It's a Mickey Mouse. Just type in Mickey Mouse first person shooter and I'm I'm sure it'll come up. I forget, but I'm like legitimately excited because it has an art style cuphead and like three D. It looks Oh, it's just, it's just called mouse apparently. It looks really good. It looks fun, man. Oh, it's a mixture of that old dude, yeah, flat animation in so a 3D good. world. It looks so good, like better than it should. Like I think it looks. It, and what sucks is it's PC only. It, it's PC only release, no console, right now anyway. But uh, yeah, and then I mean we just talked about the Puniverse, so yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, that's even that's even worse. You got. You have uh, Pinocchio in the public domain. You've got <laughs> what Sleeping Beauty in the public domain. Oh man, funny, funny stuff. Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Beauty's in the public domain, and it's like a three hundred year old story. Yeah, I know, I know. That, but that it's also a very that's like most movie. of Disney's IPs were like really old, uh, like fairy tales that they just took and be like they this stole. Is ours, this, this is ours now, pretty much. Like Straight all their IPs, stole. they're pretty much stolen. All of them. All of them. Um, I I found this. This is a it's kind of, it's not really news, but I thought I would bring it up because actually it's like kind of I'm I'm actually working with one now. Um, I'm doing some stuff with PSP Go and the original one. Uh, but there was an article that came out on Game Rant that said gamer finds perfect use for broken PSP. Uh, it says basically 
Thanks to the clever thinking of one gamer, a broken beat PSP has been repurposed as a great housewarming present. Sony's first attempt at creating a handheld PSP is now a relic of the gaming past, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so he turned it into, he basically took it apart and framed it, and it looks really, really cool. He posted it on the PlayStation Reddit. Uh, but he, he just tore it apart and like made this custom giant frame and like it looks really cool it shows all, all the like innards of the PSP and like shows the board and has some written information like it looks looks like a really yeah. cool like it, it's a good idea you know what I mean uh, yeah. some people are going to get mad though because PSPs are relatively easy to fix so like could have just fixed it I guess but it, it's his so whatever um, yeah yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. I actually just got ordered a a new charger since I wasn't able to find mine for the PSP Go, and I'm going to mod that. And then I, I don't know if I showed this last time or not, but I ordered two of these, one for the PlayStation TV and one for the Vita. Uh, but it's these. They're called, it's called uh, SD2 Vita. So basically SD2 just... Vita. Yeah, it's it's a Vita cartridge, and you put an SD card in there to mod it. So I'm gonna load up all the full library on there on the PS, uh, the Vita on the T Vita TV and the uh the Vita. So yeah, but I was going to while while we're talking about other news, I guess to break it up real quick. I wanted to show off a few things here real quick. Um, I add these this thing today. This isn't everything. There's two other things over there I didn't get to grab. But I had been waiting for a long time. So people know about... Uh, I actually have the dock hooked up over here. I haven't got to mess with it yet, but it's hooked up. So uh, the analog pocket, you know, very highly sought after right now. keeps selling out constantly. But this is the best retro type thing I've seen come out in a very long time. Um, the the screen is unmatched to anything that's out there. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. But I had been waiting to get these because uh, when the pre orders sold out, they had never shipped yet, so they never put up new orders. So I had to wait. I don't know a year or something. They finally came. I've got one in here now. But basically, uh, they're adapters. So I've got the Neo Geo Pocket Collar Game Drive in here yeah. to load up all the games, and there are these cartridges you can see here the the clear there to be able to play a few different consoles like fpga like play with your actual carts i'm using game drives so it's still playing the same way just not with the original carts but you've got turbo graphics slash pc engine and then the atari links so these finally came in for this and like i just i mean this is like you don't even you don't even have to buy a single cartridge this says something called open fpga and um, basically, you can load up this entire library of arcade games and Game Boy to Game Boy Color, Atari Lynx. You can you can emulate all of them, but they're they basically are constantly working on um, getting these as close to playing an original cart as possible. Everything I've played, like it would be, it's basically unnoticeable to play with a, a cart versus like here I'm loading up some. Uh, I'll just load up Dragon Warrior 3 here on the, the Game Boy Collar. Um, but yeah, this is just open FPGA. I don't have a card in. Like, and the, uh, it's hard to see. But, you, I mean, like, yeah, you can play bad. whatever you want. Pokemon, anything, just straight on the device itself. And it's, I mean, it's built to do that. But you can also play your cards. So I've got, like I said, these adapters here that finally came in. So for those three consoles but the the turbo graphics one i'm really really excited for but uh i also got and i i wish i hadn't put it in right before the podcast or plugged it up maybe i can unplug it but what's really cool about this man is like this is a device that is perfect for you because you can do so many things with this it's so versatile um there is a dock that came out for this so you can make this a console too so you can play all of these as just a console straight on a dock. I've got it. I can't get it unplugged, but literally just set this on top and it becomes a, a home console too. play all of those. And then like these adapters are, you know, purely if you want to play original carts or play a game drive yeah. and just straight play FPGA. 
but the open FPGA built into this to be able to play, I mean, literally whatever you want. Any pretty much all the way up to everything is 16 bit era. So all of those systems like the PC engine, turbo graphics we talked about, you know, so many different times. Like you can play all those on here. And it's just it's like the best thing to come out in, in so long for retro gaming. Um but I was able to snag a white one. I don't have it opened up yet. But this is the white analog pocket. And uh, the one that I got here, I got really lucky to get it because they were like selling out like immediately. But th this is the uh, clear see-through one. And the, the two normal colors are black and white. So I was able to, to snag a white one and the dock finally. Uh, and then I also got, it sold, uh, this one's separate. It's not in the combination, but it is the, um, actually I can't, I have it over there. It's the, the Game Gear adapter. So I've got a Game Gear uh, EverDrive. So I'm pretty stoked about this. Like, uh, I, th this device is just absolutely amazing. Just play everything all in one beautiful. I mean, this screen, there is nothing out there comparable to this screen. Uh, whatever type of screen and technology they're using, like, they, they perfected Game Boy, all of these, th these consoles, you know. Because just straight on it plays Game Boy to GBA, like without those adapters, like original carts. Yeah. But like, like I said, within this, and there's like so much you can do. It's it's just absolutely insane. Take screenshots. Like it works like a modern console, but like it's got some old Amiga, uh, Commodore sixty four. I'm pulling up some of the consoles. Um, Atari VCS, Sega Genesis, Neo Geo. NES, PC Engine, PC Engine CD, uh, Super Nintendo, Vectrex, Super Game Boy. Like, I mean, it's just insane. Like, this thing is just absolutely insane. It's, it's my favorite thing to come out in a very long time. I'll pull up a, a Vectrex so far, audio listeners. Uh, I'm showing off the analog pocket. But I'm pretty excited that I was able to snag one of the white ones. I want to leave one kind of docked up and just leave it there and have this other one to, to use so I don't have to like mess with stuff but yeah those finally came in and then I don't think I'm actually allowed to show this but I'm going to kind of do it anyway just quick <laughs> just quickly I won't even say the name or anything I'll just show it uh let me set these down here um but there's this new controller that is dropping soon Give me a sec. Let me set these down. I'm trying to find where to set that adapter. Yeah, he's got to pull it up for a second. There you go. Beautiful. Got it. Uh, that is pretty dope. It has a screen, an I ICP screen, a full screen on it. Well, that's all I'll say there. But you can go to the website so you can see it. Uh, I think I, I I think I'm allowed to, to show because you can go on the website. It just it's not out yet, but this thing comes with a dock, and it has an actual like legitimate screen there to control everything and be able to view stuff from the game. It's just it's it's crazy, and there's a black one too. I've got that sitting over there. I completely forgot about these things. They showed up today. I'm like, ah oh, yeah, dude, this looks like like it is. It's hefty. Like it it feels hefty and durable. But like comes with a dock and everything, and I think it's I think it's seventy dollars, but it, a full color screen, like it's just crazy, like crazy. It's uh you can use it with I want to say Switch, PC, Steam Deck, yeah, iOS, Android, and Switch. So yeah, there's that. Pretty cool stuff. I I think that's exciting. Well, I mean, yeah, it definitely really is pretty awesome to me so I then i show a sneak peek of that a, did you have you're still doing or no uh, no that's it oh no i just wanted to mention uh something minor we kind of already talked about this but i i saw this as i was kind of looking around some stuff apparently there were for stellar blade yeah uh it's the size for the full game is supposed to be uh 30.4 gigabytes so it's not like a, a monster size game they're saying, and this is like a huge wide range, but the story is supposed to take anywhere from 25 to 40 hours. 
How are people doing for, 50 for hours in the demo then? Because they're probably just playing the crap out of it. And then apparently for the actual like resolution, uh, this is according to Pyro on X, but the game is 50 to 60 FPS in 4K or 1440p 60 FPS. Okay. So at least I don't know how much that's true as far as like 4K, but it seems like they're they're you know trying to keep the actual frame you like said high frame rate on all resolutions, but it's like locked at 60. It's 4K 60 and 14. 14- 40p 120. So they, they so they're saying so Pyro is saying the game is 50 to 60 FPS in 4K or 60 FPS in 1440 2K essentially. I mean it's locked at 60, but they're doing their best like across the board to to get, keep the the FPS. Yeah, I would see as I'm close a, to 60 consistently. I'm a I'm a guy that I, I prefer FPS over resolution personally. Like if I can play a game at 120 frames a second, the smoother the better. Yeah. That's what I think. Like resolution kind of is an afterthought to me. Like 4K is great, but if I can play at 120 FPS and play it at 1080, like I'm good. Like I, I most you know I there's there's, po- there's yeah. probably gonna be some upscaling happening there even with if even if you played it in 1080p or something like that. There's gotta be yeah. some, some upscaling happening behind the scenes. Yeah, and it might not even be native 4K either. So we we never know that people. Uh, that's kind of like a buzzword these days to to have it in a 4K. It's a lot a lot of times it's not even actually 4K. It's upscaled to 4K. So they apparently have the the performance runs at native 1440 with a conventional upscale. Uh, so see, it's even upscaled. But somebody else is saying it'll it'll run native 4K at 30 FPS. That's that's according to Eurogamer. I could be- yeah, I could believe that at, at 30. I could believe that. But I don't know if it's 30. I don't know if it's a native 4K. I mean, this says it runs 4K native, and then it's upscaled if you're playing that, 1440. That's the whole deal that like pisses me off about Sony putting 8K on the box of the PlayStation 5. Is that like a lot of these games are not even running? Na- they can't. E- they can't even run native 4K yet. Like let a- let alone not advertising like a, 8K. Not at good performance. Like there's just never hard. Like it can like, run 8K, but it's gonna be like five frames per second yeah. because the hardware across the board can't handle it it's crazy to me yeah like that that's what people don't quite understand yet is that like a lot of you know, these games wanted, aren't even truly 4k if i wanted a pc that could actually run like like 8k at like 60 frames per second like i'm spending like four to five grand on a pc to be able to run that like god knows that that playstation's not gonna be able to come close i mean you're looking at 1800 to 2000 for uh 4090. So, yeah, it's it's gonna not. It won't I don't even know any games that could even do 8K even upscale. I, I I'm not aware of any. I'm sure there's there's something out there, but I I'm not aware of any. Uh, I don't know. Maybe in t- maybe in maybe another five ten years, you but, know, 8K will be like the standard. But it, it 100% will be. I mean, uh, the thing is, I've talked about this one. I think one other time on the podcast. But a lot of these here's what where it really starts are the television and monitor manufacturers is kind of where everything starts because they are the ones that what do you do after everybody's adopted 4k you have to move to the next thing to start that's the new tv and monitor buzzword right like 4k is pretty standard for people now like you can get a very very cheap 4k tv i mean the technology like 100 to 200 dollars you know what i mean well i mean to be fair like the more pixels you can put on the screen the more you're going to and then you can just advertise it so 12k is going to be a thing so now like you know it's it's the 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 c1 c2 c3 you know the oled like that's the thing but now they are pushing out the ak i i mean i saw it at walmart like they've got ak tvs there so they it really starts with those those guys. They they need but a is, new thing to have you buy an upgraded TV. Yeah, but is there anything even being filmed no. in 8K, even yeah, even in movies and TV? There's that's there's so nothing that's right such now a, that can take advantage. That's, we, such, we, that's such a big file size. So like you have to artificially upscale because if it was like native that's 8K, that's another problem. File it would be sizes so big. File sizes right even, now are ridiculous. Even with 4K, it's ridiculous. My one terabyte SSD I, on both of my consoles, I filled up the day that I got it. The, yeah. the day that I got both of the one terabyte SSDs for those, they were filled up. So, like, you okay. know what I mean? Like, file yeah. sizes are just crazy now. That's going to be the other, like, you, you're going to have to start using AI to upscale because there's no way you could have, like, 100%. native, like, in, in 10 years, it's native 12K. I'm like, 
okay, so this game's like a terabyte in size because yeah. it exponentially grows and stuff well, then like that. Like, what happens ridiculous. with that is, I mean, the cost of those. I mean, they're you know SSDs and hard drives are getting cheaper, but eventually it's going to have to get to the point where like the one terabyte gets to the point of like buying a micro SD card. It's got to get to well, the point where it's like twenty five dollars for a terabyte. I think it's just going to stay where it is. You're going to have native anywhere from from 1080p to 4K native and they're just going to start upscaling it because it's just it's just easier to to artificially they, upscale than have it native or else your game is just going to balloon in size. You got to. The file sizes are already ridiculous. I think That's I think just it's gaming, stupid. Let alone I, movies. What was the game I Oh, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. I I bought that the the physical the disc it still had it still had like 120 gigabytes to download. Like, and I bought the disc. It has a whole installation yeah. disc. It's two That's discs. all it is. It's just an installation, and it unlocks a code for you to download the rest of the I'm game. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, this is the other thing I was going to show off. I got this. It went on sale on Amazon for 30 bucks, and I've been wanting to play this for a while. What is it? This is Bomb Rush Cyberpunk, and uh, it went on sale for 30 bucks on Amazon. It's from I Am 8-Bit. They did the physical for it. It didn't have a physical originally. But it's like a jet grind radio type game. And I absolutely love that series. So you were just talking about one earlier that uh, is also Hi-Fi Rush, which is also a jet oh, yeah. grind radio type game. But yeah, this one got kind of overlooked. This one came out first, but it's it's like that. And it's very it's very Japanese and it's very I just I've been wanting to play it for a while and I knew I am 8 bit was doing the physical for it. So I, I held out on grabbing Man. it, but um, yeah, why not grab it? I mean, it, this is a four gigabyte file size, it says. So, it's not. I can't imagine it being that big of a game. It, it doesn't but need to be. It looks. I mean, it looks like a lot of fun to me. So, I'm pretty yeah. stoked to play that. I think it's a pretty good deal there. So, um, looks like uh, there's a rumor that Atlas is planning a Persona Four remake. But there's a catch. Um, it says it's rumored to be in development following the success of Persona 3 Reload. Uh, unfortunately, may have to wait years for official confirmation of the remake. Some feel a remake is unnecessary, while others are eager to see the game modernized, like Persona 3 Reload. Um, I here, here's here's how I feel about it. Persona 3 Reload did better than any of the entire series. The series is blown up and is doing great, better than ever. It's a massive. SMT and Persona are massive franchises now. They're huge. So I think, and I like, you played it too. We've talked about it a few times. Yeah. I think that would be great. If they did it on the level of Persona 3 Reload, which is a, I've only put maybe, I'm not very far into six hours maybe. Um, but it is, it's, it's awesome. Like it, they did a really good job with that, and I I can see why people absolutely love it. Um, hopefully I can get to play some more of it, but unfortunately it's very hard to be able to play these games where you know you're looking at like a hundred hours. Um, but I mean I think it would be great. Persona Four Golden is personally my favorite in the series. Um, yeah, personally. Now a lot of people are going to say you know five or yeah, but. I, I love I have a soft spot for for four golden so I'm I'm all for it personally I would I would love to 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 replay that story and have it more modernized and on the level of Persona Three Reload I I think it would be great I mean only only time will tell Would you uh Would you play it Probably because Persona Four is the first one that I played so Very good one It's a good uh good first entry I. Be honest, you really can't go wrong with diving into any of them first, out kind of out of order. Yeah, so it doesn't really. And I feel I know we talked about this. I think we talked about it last time, but I don't know. If we know we talked about this news, but uh, apparently for its 30th anniversary, uh, Bandai Namco is revealing they've been working on a new Mobile Fighter G Gundam, or both Sun Sunrise and Bandai Namco worked, and they're doing some kind of like project for for G Gundam. That's funny. I don't know if I we just, talked about it before. Just ordered a Gundam shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> they have them on sale for seven bucks uh, on GameStop's website. Yeah, so apparently this year is the 30th anniversary of it, and they just kind of they, they 
they really like one like art piece they kind of teased of it though but it's kind of like uh hey we're we're trying to do something for this i'm down for it i i, I like Gundam it's the most quite a unique bit. it's the most unique uh, uh mobile suit series that's out there because yeah. it's the only one that took that that super sentai like fighting which uh, i love over the top fighting and threw it into like into the mobile suit universe yeah i mean i'm for it i, I think it'd be cool I think it'd be cool. What, what yeah, do you like, think? Yeah, we don't, don't. Oh, 100%. I absolutely love love G Gundam. Uh, it's just like, hey, we're working on this thing. We, we're we we're telling you we're working on it, but we've got nothing to show. <laughs> That's like the one frustrating part. I'm like, oh, okay, I have no idea I hate when that. we're going to hear it's about like, more, more about this. It's like non-news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was I'm a, like it's news, but. Yeah, this was a pretty big thing this week. So I, I've been kind of following this a little bit, but. There's a Pokemon hacker uh, that it got arrested, and he's potentially facing five years in prison. And so the 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 guy he sells hacked Pokemon save files uh, in Japan. He's he's Japanese, uh, thirty six years old. Uh, the risk of selling hacked game files is not worth the potential consequences, including legal action and imp- imprisonment. One said, "Well, maybe." Tempting to buy modified Pokemon for an advantage, it's best of avoid this practice to stay out of trouble. Uh, but he was, yeah, he's facing up to five years in prison. The, the arrest is the latest in the crackdown on modifying and altering game files in the nation. Um, he, he made a, a statement saying this is how he survives, basically. <laughs> this is his job. Uh, but it's ongoing uh investigation and he's looking into it they're looking into exactly how many pokemon were sold and for how much they believe that the sales could have been worth millions of yen or thousands of dollars in u.s currency uh well maybe sometime before the outcome of the pokemon crime is known a maximum penalty of this crime includes five million yen penalty and imprisonment for five years in japan yeah, so pretty much he's screwed. Yeah, because Japan's got like a like they're, a ninety nine percent conviction rate. Yeah, their their legal system is crazy. Uh, I also hear that they also don't take case unless they know they're gonna win, which probably inflates those numbers. But I was looking at it like he's probably he's probably gonna face some jail time. This yeah, it says Nintendo has been quick to pursue legal action against people hosting copies of its games online. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, man. I, yeah, if you're gonna pirate a Nintendo game, don't do it in Japan, pretty much. That's do it somewhere else where you're just like, gonna get a slap on the wrist. He's selling hacked Pokemon though. <laughs> like hacked save files. That is funny. Uh I that sounds so boring to me to buy like a hacked save file for Scarlet and Violet. Like I there's something about I mean, that like fair, hacking games like that I've always yeah, found like not fun. But that game's not fun. So I like it. It's I a, like it's still a buggy mess that they just refuse to fix. It's, a buggy mess, but with like there's still a per good second. game underneath it. I, I that you blown out of proportion. Oh come on, the, it, it's not the performance isn't good, but the game doesn't run at ten seconds all the time. I I to be honest with you, like I nothing about it takes takes me out of the experience. Like I don't think it's. I hate. Then again, I just didn't like the game as a whole. I think it's like the worst Pokemon game they've ever made. But well, did did I you just, know? I don't think it. Did you know that a Yu-Gi-Oh player quit quit a tournament because of the smell? Did you know this? A lot of BO. No. Uh, well, if I you go to conventions, really you stink. know that it, it's a thing that people don't wear deodorant and it always stinks. It's been a few years, but I've never like out and out be like this. It smells disgusting here in any convention I've ever been to. He said it says the reality of excessive body odor at gaming events is a stinky situation that players can't ignore. Uh, Mis- miscommunication led to assumptions about a woman leaving a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament when in reality it was the smell that drove her away. Um, it says a Yu-Gi-Oh take player. How how hard is it to take a bath and just be hyped? These people. I mean, like, it's, I-, I saw a person wearing a T-shirt at the last convention I went to the other weekend, and their, their shirt said, "Please wear deodorant." <laughs> it's a thing, man. I've been to enough here recently that I can tell you. You walk by these people, and I'm thinking, my God, how hard is it to put but on again, deodorant or take a freaking shower? I want to say, like, I can't believe that. The thing, and I've, 
in in my own experience of like I could believe it. I've seen some people that live in absolute filth, and it yeah. disgusts me. I'm just like, how can you live like this? You have a cereal bowl with mold in it. Like, what are you doing? Well, I won't. I won't share what I do, but I unfortunately have to see oh. that constantly uh, for work. Constantly, how these. I, I I'll tell you. I went to a house about Disgusting. three weeks ago, and there's a lady on a. Um, she was wearing an oxygen mask and smoking, and next to her is a gigantic. I can't make this up. This is inside their house in their living room. Next to her is a gigantic pile. I mean, I piled high of cigarette butts on the carpet, just thrown on the carpet. That's a fire. She's she's gonna like her house is gonna burn to the burn to the ground eventually. I and she's or the, or the she's on, the, on fire. she has oxygen on and she's smoking a cigarette. It looks like she must smoke four packs a day because it was piled high. I'm t- that is, like I how rich is she? That's expensive. I uh, yeah. It's, it, yeah, like ten bucks a pack right now. Or I, like that? Trust me, I've seen people living in. Yeah, they're they're crazy. I can't even imagine. Oh God, yeah. I just don't like. I never grew up like that, but I couldn't. To me, dirty is somebody else is like, oh, this is really clean. I'm like we talk about this is filthy, and it's just like I, I don't get how you grow up in absolute filth. Like, what do you would you literally grow up on a farm with cows that just poop wherever they wanted? I like it's the same concept. I see it all the time, man. Trust me, it seems like about. Three fourths of the time for what I do is pretty nasty places. I think it's kind of the nature of that, but uh, I don't. Geez, I don't get people. I don't either. Um, I did see that. Uh, we we already talked about Starblade up, but I thought I'd just mention that the the demo has more players in than the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo got, uh, which yeah. is crazy because that already had crazy numbers too, and it's sold like, you know. Now what it Insanely. needs to do is outsell Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and then we'll have a banger on our hands. Well, we've also got speaking of that, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Three may can't come out sooner than expected. Uh, it said what they are we saw. It? I, some people were saying it wasn't going to be till the next console generation because if you think about it, we're uh, we're halfway through this generation. So, and we're about to get our refreshed consoles, the mid generation refresh, yeah, which I, means we're like two, three years away. Uh, maybe four, probably maybe four from the next console. Um, we're not I'd that far. Four, yeah, I, I don't probably. know. It's probably it's probably gonna come out on both, or it'll just be a late. But if late we're getting a refresh, I mean, like this year, which has been rumored for both. You're looking at usually, I mean, the the PS4 Pro came out two years before the PS5. Same with the Xbox uh, One X, same deal. Yeah. So like it it's soonish. Like we're we're halfway through the the life cycle. But anyway, uh, it said that they had saw efficient development in three years thanks to team retention. Um, I got a stupid ad block in the rest of the article. Uh, <laughs> but it look yeah, it won't let it won't let me read the rest. Uh. The Ultimania compilation gives insight into the development of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, providing clarity for fans uh, and some ambiguity for Part 3. Uh, it says they confirm the completion of the main story for Part 3 with voice recording possibly starting soon. Uh, so it looks like they're deep into it. Um, e- yeah, it looks like yeah. I mean, it looks like they're they're pretty deep into it. So like they're they're far along, uh, much further than even they expected. Said so the Ultimania compilation for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, remains exclusive to Japan, but brief translations have started to make the rounds on social media. Um, which yeah, I was hoping that would come here, but um. It said noted that uh, Seven Rebirth was launched four years after Final Fantasy Seven Remake, because one of those years was re- uh, releases three years after Rebirth. It would be out in twenty twenty seven and coincide with the thirtieth anniversary of the original Final Fantasy Seven. So twenty, yeah, I mean that, yeah, that would make sense yeah. for them to re- release it that year. That's crazy. 30 years for Final Fantasy. She may have Christmas when we were getting old. 30 years ago, that was released. That 
or thirty. <laughs> oh that man! Remind me. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, that's that's cool. There looks like they are um, further along than they even expected. So it could come out, you know, in the next couple years. But it looks like they're four years apart. And then we also got Final Fantasy VII remake intermission which gave that like additional story and was like the ps5 yeah. uh the the ps5 version of it uh, and it also had added content so i'm i'm i wonder if they they do something like that for rebirth or if they just do maybe extended dlc that you can buy versus since it's not coming to a new console like you know what i mean i, I wonder yeah. if we get like we're getting dlc basically is what i'm saying um do you have any plans on playing those games? Probably eventually, just not right now. Man, you would you would have a ball with, with Rebirth. I already especially. have a massive backlog of games to play. It's it's kind of hard. Well, is is Marvel Rivals going to be on your backlog? Because they revealed That's a new map. no. Okay. Marvel is owned by Disney, therefore I won't. There's a 0% chance I'll play that game. Well, there's going to be a Yazgard map blending Norse myth and Marvel lore. Uh, this is like an Overwatch clone. It's just like not my, it's not yeah. my type of game personally. I'm mean, I'm all on board if of... there's a good like Marvel game, but like uh, this just isn't my type of game at all. Uh, I I don't like pay to play. I don't free free to play. I don't like any of that type of stuff. So and, and to be honest with you, like I can't. I want to play Helldivers too, but like I don't really play multiplayer games anymore. Like if me and you got together to play some stuff, like I would do that, but like I just really don't because there's nobody I like get together with like that anymore. That yeah. we are like doing a gaming session or something. You know what I mean? It's really yeah. hard to get people together anyway. So it's, well, at least it seems like in my life it is. Um, Everyone's married with kids, working full time jobs. I don't know, man. Hard. I'm seeing all these people getting together, playing Hell Divers two and Warzone all the time. I'm thinking, Jesus. Well, I, can't, like I can't even morning. play. I can't even play a game by myself. Um. Yeah. Oh, so multiverses is is coming out of um early access and is doing you know releasing one point oh. Uh, it says it's coming with one massive improvement. Um, they're looking at this as basically like a relaunch, but it's been in early access for a few years. Didn't me and you play this together once on a, str a stream? Again? Multiverses. It's the, the. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is getting actually coming out now. Uh, the full launch will be on May 28th, and will bring new Unreal Engine 5 graphics, character overalls, and a PVE mode with unique rewards. So like, it looks like it's pretty much going to be a completely different game. Uh, yeah, it, probably. So, uh, they did add rollback netcode, which is great because I'm I specifically remember one of the issues that we had when we played was the the sort of timing and lagginess of being online. So that yeah. rollback netcode fixes that, so that it it's kind of real time, like you're playing local multiplayer. It's about uh, time. Yeah. So it it's been in it's been in beta for a while, man. So, um, I. I don't expect this to do real well, but they've already got like a bunch of new crossovers and like characters and uh, franchises coming into the the full version. So maybe, I mean, maybe it's it's just so hard to compete with Smash Brothers, man. It really is. It's just so dominant in the market. But I, I mean, mean, you could probably dig out a small little niche, but you're yeah. just never gonna unseat that game. Yeah, I hope. I mean, I I don't like not want the game to do well or anything because. I, I, Hey, maybe we could like go back and try the the one the actual release of it sometime. And see, we got to see the uh, beta, so I, I, I give it a go. Um, looks like we also got uh the Rogue Prince of Persia um offers a chance to play the game early, so probably through their Ubisoft Plus crap, I'm guessing. But uh, we yeah, did probably. just get a Prince of Persia game, but this is a new roguelike game um and it's literally called the rogue prince of persia uh and it looks kind of cool it says signups are now available on the game's official website um so i'm actually going to do that uh for a closed alpha test and it will release in steam early access on may 14th 
Have you seen anything about this? I didn't know. It does sound pretty dope. Yeah, I'm gonna sign up for it. Let me see. What's on my phone? Looking for something. Uh, consoles today, yeah. I guess it's going back from what Mr. Coffee's saying. Consoles today uh, have to at least last ten years for cost. Yeah, I think that they they need they need their consoles to last a lot longer than you know five six years. Uh, but I guess ultimately we'll, we'll see. But I mean, if the uh, like the PlayStation Six costs another six seven hundred dollars, you know, it's might might hold off on buying the new one for a while just because it's probably not going to be worth it to to get it brand new. On top of you know, let's not put it in the store so you know scalpers can absolutely just take advantage of it, which is really frustrating. Red Dead and Mortal Kombat PS4 Birth had install and game disc. I do remember when a lot more games had like an install disc and a game disc in like the 360 area. That was a that was a time for sure. Before you know, outright you know downloading and updates was like a huge thing. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much right now. If you proof it, uh, just, I think you were oh, going way back some of the stuff with the micro SD cards that Brain was talking about. And then I have no absolutely nothing about retro games, so I'm not really about that ever Kate XP. I have at least me personally, I know absolutely nothing about that. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh there was so I know Brandon isn't here right now, and it's a little bit step away from whatever he was kind of trying to pull up, but uh for those that don't know, apparently on its twentieth anniversary we're getting a new uh Sergeant Frog project if you've never seen that before apparently they they teased it on april fools but they were like hey no we're actually being serious and it's kind of like a really supposed to be like a frog type thing i've never actually super watched it because i didn't care about it when i was younger but it's kind of like a just like a goofy fun show that uh from what i remember from the original really had a, a japanese sense of humor to it which is I don't know. I don't want to call it dry, but it it can lean that way at times, or it, it can be really slapstick in in a lot of ways. But just you know, another small small thing. I know I, I saw a lot of people they saw it and they were really pumped about it. A show that nobody that I've never seen anybody that actually that absolutely outright hated the show. But yeah, you know, some small little you know filler stuff. Man, I forgot about that IP. Yeah, it's one of those that's just left. You know. A lot of people just forget about a lot of shows to time because they just kind of don't get any kind of follow up, both you know, television, anime, manga, video games. A lot of stuff just gets lost to time, unfortunately. What if Brandon, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, uh, actually, no, I didn't. Uh, I I was uh, the cartridge adapter that I was showing off. I can't find that one. I did want to roll over it. I don't know where I yeah. if it fell or whatever, but. Yeah. I was oh, actually going to wild. Yeah, it is definitely. <laughs> I I, I liked Shinshan? yeah, I liked uh, Sergeant oh, Frog. I liked Sergeant Frog. I was a fan. Yeah. You ever watch a uh, uh, Shinchan? Yeah. As well? Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a Japanese that, that little classic. kid who's just super crazy it's, and yeah, it's, oh, like it's like Kai, it's like the Japanese Caillou. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, except he's unhinged like yeah. Cartman. He's South like Park. crazy. Yeah. Yep. I I uh, I remember that one. Except Kai used trash because he's Canadian. So. Do you remember the blue? Um, I can't remember. What's it called? Um, the no blue idea. dog, Japanese dog, like uh, da Daru or something, or uh, he was like really popular kids anime back in the day, and he had a few games and stuff. I don't know if it's still going or not, but I think it was called like Daru or something. But he's like a blue dog. Uh, yeah, uh, I have no idea. I have to look it up. But oh, there we go. Screen Screen Rant: Ten Best Anime Dogs. Maybe maybe he's on this list. Uh, number ten, Madara Madaro from the Powerful Wolf Demon. I've never heard of that before. B from Dragon Ball Z. Apparently, Boo liked him. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about this list. I think uh, he was a dog. Yeah, he had a dog. Uh, Tadaki Tadakchi San. From Azumanga Dalo, I butchered the. I'd be I butchered that name of that anime. Akumaro from from Naruto. Pochita from Chainsaw. 
Doesn't he look like a dog, but I've not actually watched the anime, I so I've got no idea. I think he's a dog, but like I can't seem to find it myself. Mr. Coffee was are you saying like Blue Clue? No, but it, it's really I close to Blue like, Clues. I thought it was like Daru Garu or something or Daru. Oh, you know what? Actually, there's there's only two best dogs. One is Ein from from Cowboy Bebop, and then the other one is Iggy from from uh, from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Have you ever watched JoJo's uh, before? Like yeah. the uh, Star yeah. Stardust Memory arc? You remember that jog? It's a dog that his face looks like a man. It doesn't look like a dog's face. It looks like an actual like a the, uh, when bought... he was riding that manga. It's like is that put an actual man's face on a dog? It looks so weird. I bought the last uh, JoJo game that came out on PS5, and it might yeah. be the weirdest fighting game I've ever played in my well, life. I mean, that's that's it is absolutely general. absurdly weird, and I, I it's know so amazing. JoJo's is, and I know you amazing. love fighting games, so you should grab that because I think you would enjoy it. Did Probably you see JoJo's? If you ever watch, if you ever actually watch the anime, you have to watch the Japanese dub because in the English dub they legally had to change names of some characters because a lot of characters that are na- named after like songs or like bands and stuff like that. Yeah, that and the fact that. In Stardust uh, Crusader and that arc, uh, Joseph Joestar is just so much more funny in some of his reactions in the Japanese version. Because he's supposed to be like American from New York, but when you watch the dub, it's obviously a Japanese dude. But, so when he speaks in English, it's just so funny. Uh, did, you know, dub. did you know we're getting a new Demon Slayer game? It's, uh, it, it is I can not that. The, the show what is you would super expect popular. it to ever be. It, what would I expect it to be? Uh, any probably anything but this. It is basically like a, it's kind of like a, a Mario Party game. <laughs> it's actually exactly like a Mario, like up to the point of jumping up and hitting the block with the numbers that, to see how many spaces that, you get. I don't know that it doesn't really like it matches the tone. No, of No, it show does not. All. It's called Sweep the Board. It's called Demon Slayer Matsu no Yaiba Sweep the Board, and uh. It is. Oh. Uh, I just got a dictionary definition like for two sweep weeks. The board. <laughs> two two weeks. It literally is a Mario Party clone, to a T. <laughs> you look up the images. It's kind of. I was like, oh my god, a new Demon Slayer game. Like I was all excited, and I looked at it. I'm like, uh, all straight up a party game with Demon Slayer. I mean, it's probably gonna sell well. It probably will. Yeah, I still haven't been able to grab the other one that came out on PS5 because I'm like, I, dude, that's a game I want to grab at like twenty bucks. I just. The lowest I've ever seen it go to is 40. I have not seen it at Walmart right now. Like, I look every time I go hoping that, that it's been discounted. Still a 60 bucks. It's still a $60 game. It's been out for a long time now. Um, oh, is it only coming to the Nintendo Switch? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Especially how much it was going to be. I, I know there's also, I don't know if you've watched it. I haven't yet. Oh, it's a $60 game. Yeah, it's probably overpriced for a party game. Yeah, that's that, that was my thought. I was like, that's like a $40 game. You're paying you're paying for that for that name, that Demon Slayer names would, would jack that price up. Yeah, I, I, there might be more. There might be like, you know, mobile games or something, but I'm only aware of the two. And the other one looks really, really fun to me. Like, I, I think it looks like a lot of fun. Um. I just, it's to me like a $20 grab. Like, I just don't want to pay. The, I'm not going uh, to pay uh, 60 bucks for it. Is that the uh, Hinokami uh, Chronicles? Yeah, I've been wanting that I mean, for a while. I mean, it's like, uh, it's $40 for the Switch on Amazon right now. Is it? I want I want the PS5, yeah. though, uh, for that one. Uh, it's, oh, PS5. For the PS5, I can't, I just, it is thirty six fifty six. Oh, I guess it's on sale right now on the PS5 on Amazon. Oh, for real? Yeah, so it's not it's not the it's not the twenty dollars, but it's thirty five. It's dropped down as I, of right now. I, I, I like never see it go below sixty. And I was like, there's been a few times where I saw the forty dollar price. Well, it's point, that's but... it's listing price is sixty, but apparently they have it you know thirty nine percent off for whatever reason. As far as Amazon Prime goes, okay, I might have to look at that then. Now, I, like, I just want to grab it like twenty. I want it so bad. But it's like I really don't. I just, it's already a problem having time to play games, oh, so I mean, it doesn't uh, make sense to grab. Obviously, you know. this is all according to Amazon Prime. If you get the PS4 version, it's $25. No thanks. I'm good. I think the uh, PS4 game cases are ugly. The collector thing. They're exactly the same. What I, are you talking about? I, have, I, I don't know what, I, what it is, but I like the Switch. Top, 
PS5 I don't like, thing is the only thing that's different. I don't like this. I like the PS5 cases. It's exactly the same. It's just instead of it being blue at the top of the artwork, it's just the white PS5. It just bothers me to buy a new PS4. The case game. is exactly the same. It just bothers me. I, I, I don't know why they're still making I, PS4 games. Because I at collect all at this point. PS5 games, so it's just like a thing. It's like a whole thing. Uh, did, did you look at. Okay, so I think we, we touched on it when it was announced. And I know, like, we both we both watched and had, like, kind of mixed up opinions on how uh, the series turned out. But did you see the, the gameplay for that new Sword Art Online game? The uh, It's called Fractured Daydream. It actually oh. looks really good. Like, it looks like a ton of fun. And I don't know, like, in the series where it fits or if it's its own thing. or It looks I mean, like it's, it's it definitely its touches thing. the second season because you see the, the fairy wings, but um yeah yeah Yeah, i don't know i mean i might i might get it and try it out but i i have no idea i played a few good sword art online games there were two on the vita and i loved both of them i thought they were i got one i think i got on playstation but it was bad i didn't like it It it's one of those really there's one that i played not good it's one of those anime adaptations but it's it just throws so much at you it's so convoluted for for an anime game there's some bad i just lost interest I'm just there, like, why is this this combat should be so much more simpler? Yeah, I get it. There, there's definitely uh, there's been a lot of sort of our online games. I'm actually going to you should too, so we can talk about it. But uh, if you're listening on the the podcast later, um, you can sign up for the Rogue Prince of Persia for the uh, alpha test apparently on their website. So I'm actually checking it out now. But um, I I did want to let you guys know that that you know. Uh, to be able to play the alpha test, you sign up on looks like just the Ubi- Ubisoft website. So I'm all for that. Checking out a game early, and it looks yeah, it enough. looks fun. It has a very very unique art style, like very unique. Like I I can't think of anything else just based on this image here that looks like it. Like it's taking the almost Castlevania logo with the rogue. If you look at it close enough, it looks like. Castlevania's font, so yeah, I I don't know. It looks it looks kind of cool, and they just dropped that new Prince of Persia like what two months ago, and it, critical acclaim for that. Um, people love it, so I that's one I'm gonna grab. But because it's Ubisoft, I refuse to pay any more than twenty dollars for it. So I'm waiting for like Black Friday or something, because uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not paying the. It came out at sixty dollars. It looks like a. It looks yeah. like a fun game though. So. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um. Yeah, it it's pretty easy. So you just go on their website and put your email in. Uh, I've done a few of these. Uh, from Ubisoft. Yeah, I'll check it out. So yeah, but you just put your email in and then you sign up for the alpha test and they'll let you know if you get chosen. So. Pretty easy. I just did it. Um, yeah. Looks cool. It has a very unique art style. Very unique art style. What else have we got here? Um, yeah. We do have uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is officially on its way. So we are getting a second movie. Um, I know you're a big fan. Uh, are you excited for totally. this? Totally. I can't be that. Can't be that serious. I don't. I don't care at all. I, I, I never cared for the game. I watched it with my daughter because uh, she's like mildly interested in it, but she doesn't play oh, the games gonna, or anything. Gonna, gonna watch the movie with her? We'll probably watch this one. It wasn't like horrible. A, like a, I like didn't, a horror movie. I had no idea what was going. I I don't. I don't know anything about Five Nights at Freddy's. It was. It like it's a Blumhouse movie, which is you know notorious for making horror mil- films, but like yeah. there wasn't enough horror in it for me to even I just didn't feel like a horror film you know what I mean like they really hyped it up like oh this is you know this is a the, the horror dark take of Five Nights of which this I don't know the lore of everything but this could it could be like they could make like a brutal crazy movie with this you you know it would be a brutal crazy horror movie <laughs> Your uh, mom. you remember the you Jackass. <laughs> uh, you 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 remember you remember Goofy movie right? Yeah, of course. 
where they're traveling and the, the, there's the one stop with the uh with that the mechanical like gophers or whatever it is. Yep. yep. That would be a better horror setting than anything else. And that's Dame Arts how that movie just turned that into a whole thing where Goofy's just stuck with a bunch of animatronic gophers that are just like freaking him out. But I don't know, he might he might enjoy that. Uh me? Are you talking about me? No, I'm just talking about in general. Oh. Um, yeah, sure. But you weren't paying attention. Don't 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 lie. I, I was looking something up. I don't know what you said. <laughs> what so you said you in the goofy movie, you remember when they stopped at the little animatronic gopher location? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a better setting for like a horror movie. You really want animatronics. They it's kind of creepy in that movie I how they see, like set it up. Yeah. I just take that check that. into the movie and then just may add another 90 minutes to it. I guess yeah. Yeah. Uh for sure. I need to get that pull off there. But uh I wanted to shout out. I figured I'd just go and shout out, shout them out now. Uh there's a company called Kess Entertainment, K-E-S-S. And they actually put out uh they're sending out two board games, but it, one is called Sonic Roll. It's a Sonic the Hedgehog, like, you know, full blunt, like at legitimate board game. Um and it lo- it looks really really cool. Uh, that's their newest release. And if you look at it, it just looks awesome. Like it, it's super in depth. It's like one of those really you got to sit down and play for hours type of board games. And then the other one that they put out is called Mega Man Adventures, which is obviously being a Mega Man fan, I'm even more hyped and excited about. But these are like really cool, like actual board game adaptations of these games. Like they're very in depth if you look at them and, and watch some videos which i did they're kind of cool man like i've always dug this stuff it's just a having the people and the time to sit down and do it so i'm gonna have to you know get this in somewhere with some people and yeah try to get together like the and case, play. Uh, i was gonna say i like how the case for the box looks really like a uh like a like gen- old uh like like a SNES cartridge, or the the NES cartridge, my bad. Yeah, the Mega Man one looks like NES, and then the Sonic Roll looks exactly like a a, a Sega Genesis case. So I I think it, I think they look really cool. I this is one of those things where I wish that yeah, we we were somewhere near each other because this this could be a lot of fun to to play. But uh, the Sonic Roll, which is their newest one, uh, it is out now. But it's one to four players, and it's like, a, like I said, a full in depth board game. It's not like an off the shelf sort of, sort of deal. So, uh, I did want to shout that out. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to to check that out. So, uh, yeah, definitely. What else have we got, Mister Mark? Well, this isn't you got pulled up. I did, but I'm trying to keep working here. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out as usual. Oh, fair enough. We got up that. Um. Oh, okay. So the Tekken 8 producer, this is 10 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, he is impressed with the Waffle House stage in Roblox. Um, and we talked about, touched on the, the Waffle House thing with this. Yeah. Um. It says fans of Tekken 8 are passionate about a Waffle House stage, but legal and international hurdles may prevent its inclusion. Uh, some fans are taking matter into their own hands by creating a Waffle House stage in Roblox to showcase their idea. <laughs> All they do is a crossover with Waffle House. I'm sure they. I, I, yeah, I, I'm sure there's like probably a lot, lot more. Uh, that gives them that. Yeah, with, um, but can't tell me it's impossible though. You are dedicated if you make the stage to show, show them. Hey, we want the stage in there, and the, the designer is impressed. Just you, use it as a good advertising for both you and Waffle House. I, I, it really is, man. I mean, Waffle House is brutal, man. I don't. You go there at two o'clock in the morning, you never know what you're going to see. Somebody's in there smoking while they're frying up your egg and. <laughs> throwing chairs somebody else tweaking or something like that something um the uh tomb raider one through three remasters uh got a second update uh it looks like it is bringing a bunch of fixes to the game it, it includes improvements to photo mode and game visuals throughout the trilogy 
Uh, it also includes... Uh, the, oh, it looks like the third game has the most extensive list of changes this time around. Um, it looks like they've done a big overhaul on some of the graphical fixes. There are achievement fixes. Uh, lighting improvements to match up with the original games. Uh, new poses and a new outfit available. Um, but yeah, the, it looks like the third has the most uh, changes made to it. But looks like... Uh, Overall, the patch notes are a lot more extensive than the previous uh, updates. It says they that did add support for 120 frames per second and 4K resolution in game. Uh, that is insane. That that that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. They were able to implement 120 frames a second in these remasters. <laughs> that's that's crazy. I mean. It, Playing Tomb Raider 120 frames per second is perfect. That that game lends itself, but there's a long list of stuff added here uh, for it. But it looks like a pretty massive update. There's there's a list of about 15 things. Um, so if you have that, which I still need to grab, make sure you up, update your game right now. You absolutely need to do it and uh, play the Stellar Blade demo. Um, it looks like uh, there's a rumor that Harley and Joker's relationship in Joker 2 is inverse of past portrayals. Uh, viewers feel like Harley Quinn is corrupting Joker instead of helping him after watching the trailer for Joker 2. Uh, that sounds, uh, sounds pretty interesting. I guess we'll just have to see ultimately like how it kind of plays out. Yeah, I found this interesting. Uh, cin more CinemaCon news. Crunchyroll acquires three new films from beloved anime series. Uh, looks like these. It's a uh, you know this uh, it's Sony owned, but it looks like it's Haikyuu, um, which I remember reading some of that manga back in the day. Uh, but it looks like Haikyuu the Dumpster Battle is hitting North American theaters on May thirty first. Um, that's kind of cool. Did you ever watch any Haikyuu? Haven't, no. I read some of the manga. I, I I may have watched the anime a little bit, but I, I don't remember. I just specifically remember the manga. It's a pretty uh pretty classic and beloved series. I, dude, you know what? It's hilarious. I saw this. Uh, I might have to look this up real quick. Um, so do you you remember the story of me bringing the manga in the fifth grade and getting it taken away because I had cuss words in it, right? Yeah. So, Slam Dunk. It was Slam Dunk. That was the anime. It's getting a movie. <laughs> Crazy. It's kind of exciting because I, I I liked it and it it also looks like uh the first it's coming to Blu-ray here in North America for the first time as well. Uh, yeah, the first slam dunk Blu-ray announced. Uh, oh, this is this is for a uh, uh, movie that came out, but it never came out in Japan. So that's that's kind of cool. I'll, I'll definitely watch that. But um, the yeah. manga's wow, the manga came out in 1990. But yeah, I got that. That's crazy. That taken away from me because I had cuss words yeah. in it. I specifically remember it said bastard. That was I showed everybody because we thought it was cool. <laughs> He's probably like, been stupid. And they're like, no. Like, nobody understood it, reading backwards. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You're a weirdo. I'm going to tell a teacher on you. That's type thing. What, what happened. Yeah. So, you talk about, like, really being into, like, game preservation. Yeah. So, apparently, this was just posted earlier today. Apparently, after 25 years, the lost N64 game that could have been Nintendo's answer to Tomb Raider has been preserved online. So apparently the game is called Requa. Uh, so they they printed they printed this R I Q A uh, was uh, promoted as an action adventure game on the N sixty four by the now defunct UK developer Bit Studios, but it was quietly essentially just canceled after they initially like announced it uh, after it it was unveiled in May of ninety nine in Nintendo Power, but apparently now. Uh, According to uh, the Time Extension reports, that one of the original developers behind Requa has published several prototypes of the game online that are fully playable on both emulators and the actual N64 hardware. Uh, oh. 
via the EverDrive. Uh, so like one of the one of the places I saw it was on like the archive.org. Essentially, it's like a online ROM that you can like download yeah. for the game and play it. That's where I get all mine. Uh, so this is on but, there now. Uh, yeah, that's what I saw. But it, it looks like it was like he one of the old developers is like I'm gonna finish this this game and it looks just like you would expect like a N64 game. Obviously, I think it's, it's not probably not like fully complete, but like complete enough to like be able to play the game. But it, it was supposed good. to be like a in like a different take on like. Tomb Raider. I can see even with like, the cameras, like Raider, it's yeah. got the Tomb Raider camera style there. We have the kind of control turning. Started watching some of this stuff. And you're like, oh man, just this is, could have been a really good game. Yeah, it really. And then again, it has that that 64 art style, which I I think is I'm well well dated. It, it, for. Yeah. Wow. So I'm gonna have to put this on there. I have to remember to. I got the archive.org thing pulled up there. Wrong. Gotta play it, see how it is. Like I don't know how much of a story there is, but it definitely looks looks interesting. You can check it out online. I'll probably throw it on the EverDrive. I'll just go ahead and download it now. But yeah, but I was like, wow, old an old game twenty twenty five years ago that just got didn't get completed and just got canceled. And they're like, oh yeah, this game that we that was announced like in ninety nine. Oh well, I I worked on it and that, had, here's a playable prototype. That, that's amazing. That that is uh. That is what should happen for for all of these um, games that games that get canceled. That that I wonder that how are far out into, there, like how far in development after they announced it, it was, and then like how much work he had to do or when he started to to like get this game like up up to snuff and like all right here's here's this game that just kind of got canceled, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. It says here on the all archive, these years ago. It says um, I've uploaded the last four builds and zip files. You can. You can all download and try. The game works in some emulators. It also works on N64 with an EverDrive. He says he has a lot more build. I'm reading this exactly. It says, I have a lot, yeah. um, a lot more build of the game, but I figured those four are probably the most interesting. One important thing you need to have, two controllers to play the game. Controller 2 is used to open the menu and select a level. The four build and the rare files are the last build made of the game for the N64 before it got canceled. And the team was reassigned to Die Hard and Thieve World. That's really interesting. It's like, this is what the build was. This is, this is the exact last build of the game we had before it got canned. That on is... top of, like, whatever. Yeah, I don't know if it's legal for him to do this, considering he worked on the project and it was... Cancel, but it's maybe five years later, the studio doesn't the even studi exist anymore. Yeah, I mean that might be the only reason why, because this is not you know of the norm to be able to. I'm sure uh, if there was like a trademark, it's long since expired, so it's kind of like there's no Nintendo can't come after me for this. Well, this is great. This is what this is what people should do because this like you know, for games they get canceled. Like why not just have somebody be like, well, this got canceled, it's not finished, but here's what we have of the game that that's kind of playable on yeah. top of I don't know whatever whatever work he's doing on the game itself. Because like these these companies don't care. That's the thing. Like if it's know, an it's active really company, they just do not care about these things. You know, being preserved in in history and like you know, people worked on these. Like people put their time and, and blood, sweat, and tears into some game. of these games, and like they just hand never to be seen. So I this is great. That's that's great news. I'm very happy to see that. Uh, yeah, I know absolutely. Have you uh, seen the game Heading Out? Have you seen uh, any of the gameplay for that? I don't think so. So it's actually from Saber Interactive. Um, they did the Serious Sam games. It looks kind of cool, like kind of interesting. Like something, I this would be like a, a game I'd probably want to play on like Game Pass or something. Uh, but it lo it looks very interesting. I, I yeah, it's like a it. unique take on like a on like a on a driving game, racing game. Yeah, I like the art. It's got style. a very unique art style. Yeah, re really unique art style. I dig it. Like a, like almost like a they ripped it right out of like a comic book. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks really really cool. I dig it. I'm all for it. Yeah, that'd be one I'd want to play on like Game Pass or something. I think because uh, I you know I don't know if I would like it or not, but um, 
sometimes what I do is with, with Game Pass is like if I really, really like the game, I end up buying the physical of it. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it comes out May 7th, so only yeah. a few weeks away. Yeah. At least that's, that, that's what the Steam page says, pretty much. Yeah, that's, that should be uh, pretty cool, I guess. The Xbox Cloud Gaming's uh, updated... It says Microsoft is updating the Xbox Cloud Gaming UI and lets players start a party chat, find and manage friends lists, and more. So I don't have a lot of experience with the Xbox Cloud Gaming. I, I've played it a few times. But what it's seeming like they're doing here is this is definitely heading to a handheld. <laughs> like, this sounds like... Because they've been doing this Xbox Cloud Gaming stuff, like, yeah, continually updating it. We talked about it a few times. And to me, that signals, hey, there, there is for sure a handheld coming. And Phil Spencer yeah. said he likes the idea and would like to do it. It makes sense. I mean, if anybody can do it in the marketplace, it's Microsoft. They've got the funds and the money. Um, yeah. Could that make them do better, do you think? If they offered a handheld, like a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally? That's not, I, I don't not a say PlayStation no. Portal. I just don't know. I mean, I wonder, like, would that, you know, because what I would imagine is it would basically be a Series S in a handheld form. So not, obviously, it's yeah. not going to be able to put a whole Series X. That's the most powerful console out right now. They would never just be able to put like that in there. But why not just take advantage of one that's kind of already out there and just partner with them instead? Like who would who would you partner with? I don't know. Pick one. I mean, I pick a, pick a partner and be like, "Hey, we'll give you exclusive access to to this library." But why and then would you do whatever tweak you got to do? Why? Well, because at that they point they can to... just like wash their hands of any deal with deal with the hardware itself. They can just work on the software side of it and probably save money. What software side? Of the actual game, just the games themselves, just making sure they work on whatever hardware you're throwing on. You don't have to worry about the actual hardware development. What games? Do what, do what somebody else has already done it. What games? There are no games. There are no games. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Have you heard of the game Nanuka Secret of the Shattering Moon? I'm probably going to be a note for most of these, if not all. Jeez. Uh, it's got again another game with a very interesting art style. Um, it's like a, it's a puzzle esque game, but it kind of looks cool. I saw there was one too that I actually had this in my uh, notes on my phone, but it looked like one that you would like. It's called Yasha Legends of the Demon Blade. Um, it's coming to all platforms. The anime esque game, um, basically Stellar Blade. I don't know if it looks like Stellar Blade, but <laughs> it, it kind of looks cool though. Yeah, it's uh, it definitely looks like a hack and slash game. It's uh, Taiwanese Studio Seven Seven Quirk. I've never never heard of them, but it looks kind of cool. I mean, it looks like yeah, something like a... I would play. It definitely looks interesting for sure. I I I, I dig the uh the characters there though. I like uh like the anime art style there on that. So that's kind of cool. Anime esque Japanese art style pretty much, yeah. Yep, I dig it. I can <laughs> dig it, as the kids would say. Apparently Fallout seventy six is seeing a major resurgence in popularity. Uh, uh, it's only because of the of the show. Yeah, it's following the premiere. I can't imagine it's not gonna. It's it, I can't imagine it's gonna stay up there. But I'm biased. I didn't like Fallout seventy six. I mean, I I I haven't gone back to to play it myself. I just know what I've heard that it's been much improved well, I, and has a pretty well, diehard fan launch. base. Oh, uh, you can find a diehard fan base for any game. Not all of us can have good opinions on games, so. No, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's totally true, I guess. But in, like in the immediate year or two after that game came out, they made every terrible decision when it came to that game. 
They did. I mean, I, I played it at launch and I was you know, pretty let down. Uh, I was I, very I just, let I down. Have no interest. I have no interest in going back. To, I don't care how much they fix it. I I I have no interest in going back to that game though. You say that, and then you'll be playing it in a week. No, I guarantee. I I bet on it. I've I yeah, I've only beat Fallout Four once. And I've gone back several times, and I just I get bored with Fallout Four. I that's why I said I didn't I didn't uh I didn't like Fallout Four. But one of the big things this week, which I forgot to mention, is actually in the thumbnail. Um, uh, we did briefly mention it, but. Uh, basically, uh, Deep Silver Games and what's the other one? Uh, the publisher, I can't remember. They're doing oh, uh, uh, so apparently Kingdom Come Deliverance two it got leaked, and uh, War Horse Studio and Deep Silver, uh, they have an event coming up on April eighteenth at two p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To reveal a game, but it's a it's apparently, apparently that game. It's yeah, it's apparently that. Uh, they got like an image there showing new game reveal and like, I mean it it looks like that, but uh, it probably is. And I know we both played that. It's it's like it's weird because it's like a as realistic take as possible of like yeah Skyrim, good, but instead it's like super realistic it's a good game. Like, it's a good story. I just didn't like the combat. Yeah, that's, the combat was my like. problem. That was my biggest problem was the combat. I was like, it's too realistic. Like, I don't want to play a simulator. Yeah, it, that's what it felt like. And, and and that was the only thing I disliked about it. Like, yeah, I feel like it held. I get it. And people love it. So, you know, must be a me thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, if, if that's coming, I, I guess that's probably a pretty, pretty big deal. Um, I think it would be absolutely. I don't know. Are there games before Deliverance? Were there other Kingdom Come games? No, that's that's the first one. I thought so, but I was curious if maybe there was like some older ga- PC games or something. None, none that I'm aware of. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. Um, yeah, you got any anything else found? Uh, I don't. Unless there's something that you have. I don't think so. I th- I think uh, cover cover quite a bit. Any closing yeah. thoughts for this episode? Uh, probably should add some prepare for this. I don't know, drink your milk. Don't drown your goldfish. Type thing. I guess don't don't. Uh, not not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good episode though. A lot of stuff this week. A lot of a lot of movie stuff, obviously, and we didn't even cover all of it, but. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so CinemaCon kind of wrapped up all of that stuff. Um, obviously, the the big news there with the Fallout TV show did pretty well, and uh, I think those are the biggest things there. So appreciate everybody watching and listening. You can become a channel member. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description. It'll also be in the description for audio. We appreciate everybody's downloads. Downloads have been doing great. It seems like we kind of really hit a, um, an audience with, with audio listeners, so we appreciate that a lot. Um, you can also check out the link tree. It's got a link to all the social media where we'll keep you up to date. We'll have shorts and things coming out from some of the shows, and uh, yeah, to keep up to date. We also got merch. Uh, the Teespring merch store is on our YouTube page down below, and it will also be linked and the audio wherever you're listening seems like uh apple podcast is doing very very well for us um doing pretty good on spotify too so again we we appreciate you guys thanks everybody that watched live and we will be back again uh next week talk to y'all later See y'all then